Well, I am an admirer of Elisa. Elisa has even worked for me, and the fact is, is that she is talented. What they call Carmen and Friends? Carmen. Well, Carmen. But oh. if Carmen, you're saying like not to frog? do that. Yeah, wait, wait. I actually have <laughs> watched a few hours of the Kermit and Friends. <laughs> How many hours <laughs> have you watched, Natalie? Oh, no. <laughs> Probably indulged in eight hours. Holy. Uh, my wife and I uh, watched um, uh, Benji's ex uh, girlfriends or whatever's going on. We watched this crazy podcast, and I am. I have to say. This is one of the, probably in the top five things I think about right now. She has a podcast, but she gets to come on the radio. It is craziness <laughs> oh, upon craziness. Welcome to Kermit and Friends. I am Elisa. This is Fozzy, and Kermit is watching us uh, from heaven. Uh, so this is going to be a jam-packed show. Uh, we have multiple guests and multiple surprises. I want everyone watching the show to feel a lot of joy. That is my only hope, okay? The feeling Fozzy gets when a poodle is humping him that's how I want you to feel watching Kermit and Friends today, okay? Uh, if you are booked for the show, uh, be patient. I'm going to get everyone on. So uh, just have fun. Pay attention to what's going on. I'm going to ask you your opinion. Uh, most viewers would recommend like a three to four drink minimum. Unless you're like ultra conservative, then just knock yourself out because it's going to be very wild, okay? It's going to be, I would say it's going to be a wild show. Just a little bit about me. I'm going to be performing on the best of San Francisco uh, stand-up. So Lord knows why. <laughs> Saturday, May 22nd at 8 p.m. So if you go to bestofsanfranciscostandup.com or bestofsfstandup.com for more information, they're consistently ranked as one of the San Francisco's top-rated comedy shows for over three years running. And I'm thinking, you know, how good can it be? They book me and I'm not even a stand up comedian. <laughs> so it's like, how, I don't know how they could be like a top, but um, they did talk to me, sugar. And, uh, you know, I, I am looking for work right now. So I took the job. Do you ever take a job that you're not qualified for at all, sugar? Oh, every job. <laughs> I'm yet to have a job that I actually am qualified for. Is this is this an in person thing or is it online? So it's actually on uh, Zoom, right? So it's on Zoom. But I looked at the other comedians, and they're like real comedians. Like Greg Greg Fitzsimmons is on it. Uh, like Doug Stanhope was on it. Like all these people I've heard of, and I think those people are people with jokes. And I don't really have any jokes, but um, I'm just like, what the hell? But I was really, maybe they got the wrong number. I don't know. They texted me, but then my, <laughs> my picture was on there. My picture was on the website. So I got to start thinking of jokes like pretty fast, I think. <laughs> you don't have to tell jokes. Just, just really? talk. No, I don't think so. I, I think you're funny when you just talk about your experiences. I've oh. never heard you tell a joke. No, I, I just, have none. I, I like, 
I just like when you respond to stuff. Like I think it's funny when when Andy says I identify as pansexual, and you say, "Is that why you haven't called me back?" <laughs> and just a little weird, spontaneous stuff like that. I just find that really funny. Yeah, I met up with this guy. I had a meeting with a um, a guy recently, and I can't believe this is still happening to me. I, I meet up with a guy for like a work reason because I wanted to book him for Kermit and Friends. And, and he tells me he's, um, I don't know why or how this came up, but he mentioned to me he's like polyamorous. <laughs> and like, I just can't believe that this is still happening to me. I can understand why it happened to me when I was like 21, 22. But nowadays, it's so weird and shocking when that happens because it's, it's more rare. So when somebody says something, I'm like, do you want me to be polyamorous? Like, do you want to include me? Because that means like a lot of people, I think. So am I one of them? So yeah, I mean, weird things still happen to me. Even after all these years, you would think that uh, it calmed down, but it really hasn't. Um, yeah, this is an exciting show, Sugar. I think I told you I have some uh, special guests, like um, unbelievable guests today. So, you know, we have Lizzie, who just got off InfoWars, the show InfoWars. She is... Saving the world. She's on Alex Jones. She's on all across the news. Um, so she's going to be like uh, up in like, uh, I think like 20 minutes. I'm going to put her on. Uh, before her is Flesh and Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. I mean, how cool is that? And That's also, amazing. Yeah, I'm yeah. very excited about that. Yeah. So I flesh love and bone. bone Thugs and Harmony. Me too. And I want to hear, I want to hear what he has to say about like our little religion. Because I oh. bet he has an opinion about that, you really? know, about that we're giving the church alternative and, you know, some place for us to come and be spiritual and be accountable and that all religions are welcome. And, you know, you accept Jesus Christ or you could be a Muslim. And just I wonder what, like, he thinks about Kermitarianism. Yeah, yeah. He probably doesn't know about it, if I had to guess. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably never heard of it, but that's okay. That's okay. We're growing. Um, it's a growing religion. Uh, yeah. So I'm just curious about a lot of things. The person that booked uh, flesh and bone for the show, do you know who booked uh, flesh and bone? I think it was, what is it? G G Ryan G what's his name? This is him. It's G. Ryder. G. Ryder. Hello, everyone. I, mean, I, I didn't mean I wasn't being a smart ass. I was literally trying to oh, remember because I, I really good. appreciate you doing that. That's yeah. so cool. Doing great. How are you doing? Good, babe. How are you? We're doing, doing great. great. Jesse, um, you know, I'm just so thrilled that you booked, um, you know, uh, this guy, Flesh and Bone, for the show. I know you've been friends with him for years. Um, is there anything? I'll for a little bit. Yeah, is, is there anything that you like love especially about him? Is there any like why did you think of him for Kermit and Friends? Because he's a cool homie of mine. We uh vibe the same way and like, you know, it'd be a good thing to help your show. So uh just wanna get down with that. Yes, so. yes. So I'm gonna have uh you and him. I just wanna say hello real quick to my friend Onision, who's back. Hey Onision. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing I, I have an answer. I have an answer for your question. You're, What's that? you're asking why someone would be into you even though you're not 20 something anymore. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, you're like obviously a really attractive person. So people would be into you because you're attractive. Age is irrelevant oh. in that regard. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, it's pretty, That's nice well, to hear. Well, look at, look at your face compared to like, you know, the average model and you have the same proportions and everything. So people would naturally be attracted to you because of that. Yeah, I just, I, I experience it less and less. And also Onision, I've been dressing a lot less slutty than I used to. So when I was I in New maybe, York- I think maybe people think you're taken. Maybe that's why. Well, yeah, I mean, they do. Well, some people think I'm taken, but you know, cause I'm engaged to Andy, but he's really kind of like an absentee fiance. Uh, like he's been missing for like three days and I don't know if that's normal for a fiance, but sometimes I just can't get a hold of him and I just have to be okay with that. In fact, I went to the hospital like three nights ago because I had such intense anxiety and I was really scared. I thought I was having a heart attack and I don't know if it's Andy related, but some people are telling me it might be because of my relationship. About that Unitarian church idea. That's what that <laughs> is. Do you know about Unitarianism? Is that your religion? No, I don't have a religion. I'm agnostic, so I just am open-minded, generally. 
Um, it's like oh. it's like we, pansexuality is kind of like the agnosticism of religion or uh, sexuality or whatever. So mm-hmm. it's it's like basically where you're open minded and you basically go with whatever your spirit or your heart or whatever uh, desires or makes the most sense to you, but you don't want to like lock yourself down to one thing because you don't know what life is going to throw at you. Uh, Unitarianism. I've actually been to that church before. As I understand, it's where basically every faith, every religion, whatever is welcome there. They're all just there basically to hang out and, you know, be a community of people who, who want to be spiritual, but they don't want to be, you know, specific to one thing or one system of ideas necessarily. They, they're they open-minded. So it's like the okay. best concept of religion. Oh, okay. Because when I was researching you, I actually saw that you had a religion at one point. When I was 17, I wrote up a bunch of ideas about uh how we should protect the earth and how we should, the only thing we should worship is the earth because the earth is like essentially the ultimate dad or the ultimate mom that created us. We're, we're all made of stars, quite literally. Um, I just came up with those ideas when I was 17 and then I just left it. And I, oh, I okay, it. okay. I don't know why I thought you ran a church, but I, I need your help because we're gonna be interviewing an amazing guest right now, okay? So I need everybody's help, like Charmin and Onision and Lori and everybody here. Okay, so I'm going to read you a little bit about this guy. He was so nice on the phone. His name is Flesh and Bone. He's an American rapper and a songwriter known as a member of the group Bone Thugs and Harmony. He's the older brother of Lazy Bone and cousin of Wishbone. He won a Soul Train Music Award, a Grammy, and an American Music Award. This is a great guest. You know, I want to thank Jesse, uh, Andy's roommate, for helping me book him. Um, Everybody, welcome to the show, Flesh and Bone. Hello. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Thank you, Elisa. Thank you for having me on Kermit and Friends. It's an honor. It's a really, really, I really appreciate it so much. You guys are beautiful. I love the show. I love the setup. You guys are looking real good over there. Wow. Oh, my gosh. It's such an honor. I was shocked when you were booked for the show, uh, Flesh. Okay. I was so impressed. Like, right. when, I, when I spoke with you on the phone... Uh-huh. You were so unbelievably humble, okay? I, I try to. I try to. I, you know, I got to, you know, I got to be humble in a sense. But in the, today's world, you got to, you know, kind of like be on edge and everything. Yeah. Not were sort, you, of, sort of. Were, have you always been like that? Like at the height of your success? Mm-hmm. Are you still able, you know, to be humble? Do you still talk to the regular guy like me? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, you do? Okay, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's real key and real essential, especially when... The, when you have so many, so many fans, I've been on my career is going on about 28, 29 years old professionally right now. And and to have the success that you have, it's real hard. A lot of people, it's hard to uh, uh, hang on to that, that humble thread you dig and or, 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 or to be grounded in a sense. But uh, I tend to be able to communicate and get along well with people. And I think that's essential to success to a certain degree. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm easy to communicate with, and easy to talk to, and uh, kind of humble. But I will kick, I will kick some ass if I have to. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah. I heard, I heard. Uh, by the way, I heard that you uh, got a, a guest on there from the Alex Jones show. By the way, I'm a huge Alex Jones fan. Really? You know what I'm saying so. Yeah, I, I, I dig. As a matter of fact, I'm waiting on some supplements coming in the mail right now. My bio true selenium and my, my, um, my, my, um, um. Uh, some other stuff coming in the mail, my um, 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 from that guy. Though I've been, I've been, I've been buying supplements for him for about 10, 12 years now. Some of the best stuff I ever get my hands on. Wait, what is that? What What are you waiting for in the mail? What exactly is that? Well, I get the my iodine, BioTrue Selenium, and then it's a couple. It's a couple other ones. Um, 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 and X Factor. It's it's a bunch of. I get like six or seven different supplements from this, from uh, from the from the uh, Infowars thing. And what and does that help you a lot? Do you feel oh, better? Hell, oh hell yeah, hell yeah. That's my kid. A lot of people don't know, you know, flesh. Why you look so good and why you know all of that. They don't, you know, some of my supplements is top secrets. I never I never tell them where I get it from and everything. But yeah, that's yeah. great. So um, yeah. I was reading about you uh, about mm-hmm. your background. Um, it seems like you actually, you seem like such a happy person uh, and such a like stable, normal guy, friendly guy, but you had a very rough childhood, okay? So what mm-hmm. was your life like before was, your success? What was it like before then? I mean, it was, uh, you know, childhood was, it, it, it was, it was a little uh, uh, rough coming up. And uh, as far as, you know, being in a uh, not so good situation when it comes to, 
um, um, environment and everything. We had to, you, when I had to forge my way. And I was determined to come out of that whole ghetto situation and uh, 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 make something better for my life. Um, and I wasn't happy with just, uh, uh, okay, I'm stuck here. And, no, no, and, uh, stuck here in the ghetto and you're going to have to accept that lot. You know, um, I was determined as, a, as, a, as, a, as early as I can remember before I even started rapping or right. I tried to write my first rap when I was about eight or nine years old and, um, and uh, determined to use that as a way. I've always been, first of all, I've always been athletic. I've always been extremely uh, 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 scholastic in, in, in academics. I've always been a great student. And these were my tickets. These were my tickets determined to get the hell out of that got that 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 damn that damn ghetto. You okay, did. so you're naturally smart, naturally. right? Okay. So you're 100%. naturally smart. You you studied hard. It sounds like, but you were naturally smart. You're naturally a great writer. So you're creative as well. Absolutely, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Imagination always through the roof. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, so I was, I was one of those type of dudes. I did go to college for one year until I decided to leave and mm -hmm. go pursue my, um, my, my aspirations and dreams as a musician slash, slash, uh, a, a rapper, be it that as it may. And, um, and, uh, but yeah, growing up as a kid was, was one of those ones, man. You had to, you know, you had to know how to fight. You had to learn how to fight or get your ass kicked every day. And, um, and uh, and uh, it, it, uh, junior high school was where things started to change because me and my brothers, we started a group called the Band-Aid Boys. And from the Band-Aid Boys, it grew into the Bone Enterprise. And from the Bone Enterprise, it grew into Bone Thugs and Harmony. So we already had a plan to get the hell out of that bottom rut shit. You did so how old, how old were you when mm -hmm. you experienced that success? Um, I think we started, we, we started experiencing a lot of success at... At, 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 of course, even before making it professionally, because uh, it, it started off locally. You know, we you had to you had to you had to earn your keep with respect to being. If you're a rapper, you had to be real good at it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that early success started coming when everybody in the neighborhood or or or, or started recognizing, saying, "Yo, you guys really got something. You guys should hold on to it. Hang on. Keep trying. Keep doing. You're gonna make it." From the talent shows, from the junior high school talent shows, from the high school talent shows, from the from the neighborhood mm -hmm. city talent shows, that it it started right there. It started with local success, citywide success, and then um, um, it kind of like plateaued a little bit. And that's when I was like, "Yo, um, if we want our careers to go any further, I, I, that's I, I went to California when I was like 18, 19 years old." Mm -hmm. uh, es escaping a, 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 a little situation in Cleveland from being, get, get, getting caught with drugs or whatnot. I had just done my first year in, uh, in college and then on my uh, 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 summer vacation, I was caught up selling drugs. I got caught and uh, had to go to court. Instead of going to court, I skipped and went to California um, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, 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 and saw how active it was musically. And I met a lot of a few actors, a few rappers and all of that stuff. And then and decided that, yo, man, California is the place where we need to be to be able to grow, to expand, to get out of that local fame stuff to nationwide. And that's exactly what happened. Um, um, so the success, each step of the way was a sign saying, here's this open door. You guys got what it takes. Come on, bring what you got. So, so you, okay, so you had everything you, you needed. You actually knew what to do, right? Absolutely. Because sometimes Absolutely. people are like, what the heck do I do? I'm so confused. But you have been blessed in so many different ways. Are, are you somebody that's religious? Do you think that God gave you these talents and showed you these signs? Yes, I'm 100% religious. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, you know, God, 100%. I'm a 100% god fair man. I have love and respect for, 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 for uh, Christianity islam and judaism and all in between i'm not that type of guy that put these guys above this guy you know i love christ and uh, you know what i'm saying i love god i love i love all of the religions and i and i wish people would have the same um um um, um same uh um, um an insight or same um outlook on life you dig what i'm saying you know because what kills me the most is that you got a lot of satanists you got a lot of you got a lot. You got a lot of people that don't believe in God that think they controlling things and they ain't got they ain't controlling the goddamn thing, but they goddamn imagination. You seem like they winning a little bit, but no, 
all you know is it, and i'm saying that to say because i'm understanding what's going on in the world today and these mm-hmm. god these godless ass people that thinking they they trying to destroy everybody's life taking all it those people don't believe in god you dig what i'm saying they don't believe yes. in god and they are not going to be successful in what they're trying to do to destroy people like you and i people that work hard for their family to try to put food on the plate you got these people telling you to don't go outside, to go outside, wear a mask, don't smile, don't breathe, don't be happy. See, these, mm-hmm. are, God, these are godless people, and they are not going to get too far. They're not. They already failed. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, how are you going to take over God's world? You don't, believe, you don't even believe in God. You're going to take over his world? Man, you're some, just, these are some dumb-ass people. But yes. Okay, to, so to I want to say one story, thing for those to people. Make, to, to make okay, a long story short, yeah. yes, I do believe in God. I'm a great yeah. God fearing man, and uh, and that's what I that's who I believe give me every ounce of success, every 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 inspiration, motivation, every step of the way. Every that makes me he makes me more courageous every day to keep stomping and fighting for what I believe in. Right. Okay. So the people flesh. So the people that don't believe in God. Mm-hmm. Uh, those people. So, right. you know, I look at someone like you, you're a good looking guy, you're talented, you're nice. Mm-hmm. You've had so mm-hmm. much success. I mean, you yes, have ma'am. won one awards mm-hmm. that are just like, you know, very few people have those awards. Mm-hmm. So I would think for you to believe in God, you would have to, because it's like, absolutely. God loves you so much in particular. Yeah. In and partic- I, yeah. if I, and if I walk out of my apartment Mm-hmm. And I go on the street and I see all these like homeless people and people suffering. Okay. I can I can imagine that those people probably wouldn't believe in God because you started off in a bad environment, mm-hmm. but you you were blessed with these unbelievable tools. Unbelievable tools. Unbe- like tools that like and I could meet a million people in my lifetime mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like just you have those tools, right? Absolutely. Okay. So so why some people? Why you? Mm-hmm. And, and then why not those people that are, are outside? Why? why? Well, I tell you what, um, why some people are not others, still some, it takes a decisive decision. Um, God gives you the ability to decide to make action. Um, I believe that those people that are outside and everything, they, I believe that they may believe in God or they might not believe in God, but it takes a lot of action on your side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It takes it. It takes it. Don't it, okay. You can have faith in God. You can have faith in 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 in, in the prophets or the stars or the planets. You, or, it, but it takes a lot of effort. Once you it, it, uh, those that that faith needs works. That faith needs effort. That faith need to be that 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 faith. It's like a seed that needs to be planted. If you don't plant it, then you won't see the fruits that come from it. So. So I believe that those people out there that are on the street or whatever the case may be, yeah, they they may believe in God, but they need to take those extra steps in order to for you know do it's they say if you take one step towards God, he's two steps closer to you. You see what okay. I'm saying? So that okay. type of situation or scenario, I may not be explaining it uh, uh, more uh, articulate enough, but that's to to some certain extent. Um, um, you have to show some type of effort. You have to put up some type of energy. You know, God created you to 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 to, to move around, to show energy. You dig what I'm saying? And that's what faith is. The energy that you the energy that you emit uh, uh, shows a lot about your faith. And 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 God is so powerful and miraculous. All He needs to see that is that you believe in Him a little bit, and He'll give you all the decisive tools that your life needs. And you would have so many tools. You have so many godly tools at your disposal. You wouldn't know what to do with it. Wow. Okay. So I want to make a step towards God and maybe mm-hmm. the people out there do too. So my first okay. step is my first step prayer. Okay. Okay. Would that be a good first step in your opinion? Mm-hmm. It is. Okay. Yeah. Go, okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good step. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So you want to take a first step towards God, a first step prayer. Okay. Yeah. So if, if I if I start praying, which I, I do pray, right? And mm-hmm. I do see signs all the time. Absolutely. But I, I, I know there are people out there feeling very hopeless. Indeed. Uh, and and sad and uh, scared and scared. So uh-huh. when and sometimes when I, I have such bad anxiety all the time, pretty much. And okay. when I when I try to talk to God, you know, I want him to like cure it for me. Mm hmm. 
But sometimes I think, oh, maybe I need to, you know, take more steps. Like, what can I do mm-hmm. to prove to God that I'm worthy mm. of blessings like that? Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um, I think, I think definitely um, sometimes uh, um, the feelings of despair, um, mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, sadness, um, sometimes may be a little bit overwhelming. Yes. Um, but at the same time, that's a challenge. That's a test. You're going to be tested and you're going to be challenged 100 percent. Yeah, don't don't. It, it, and, and that that anxiety. Come on. We are all human beings. If, 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 if you I don't care who it is or who, especially if you, especially the people that believe in God is going to experience the most anxiety is going to experience the most stress. And then, and then, and then, and then you're going to have to be able to really, 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 really dig deep into yourself. And then that those prayers, dear, dear Lord, please give me the strength that I need in your holy name to overcome this anxiety. Those simple things like that, a simple prayer like that, dear Lord, give me what I need to overcome this illness or the sicknesses or, 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 or give me what I need to be able to succeed at, at X, Y, and Z. Just something that simple is the antidote to hey, overcome that type of situation. So, Hello? so wait, quick, yeah. uh, hold on one second, Flesh. Uh, yeah, Kermit and yeah. friends. I'm trying to get on your show. I know, I know. Yeah. I want you on because uh, I, I definitely want you on. Because you, I know what you did today to me. What? I got the whole, I got three members of the cast of my reality show with me today. I got Josh Gray, Conrad Steinman. All right, all right, Quake. Okay. We're I- shooting the question, the questionable, questionably re- real men of the Hamptons is the show called. The all questionably right. real men. Are you going to put me in flesh on this show? It sounds like a great show. Yeah. Yeah, I need to get well, on there. Put you on the show. You can put us on your show. Yeah, yeah quick, quick, quick. Uh, I got the cast right here. All right, quick. Um, you know, as long as I have you, as long as I have you on the phone, I have flesh and bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. What's your question for him? Tell, tell him a friendly. Tell him Roy Foreman sends uh, regards. Roy Foreman sends question. his regards to Flesh. Roy, Absolutely. Does he know the bone thugs guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Josh, Josh is the CEO of Scrapper. He's, I guess Mr. we're supposed Roy to meet Foreman. with you guys. You know him? You know this yeah. guy? With Roy, For- with Roy Foreman. How, yeah, how do they know each other? Mr. Roy Foreman. Roy Foreman. Yes, indeed, I do. George yeah. Brother. All right, I'm going to find out right yeah. now. George That's not a Foreman. question. Absolutely. Is that the grill? Is that a grill? That's the question. All right, quick. I'll get you on. I got to go. Bye. I'm uh, yep. sorry. Uh, that's yep. a friend of yours? Yes, indeed. They're, yeah, Roy. Yep, I know those guys. George, Roy, all those... All those guys, yes, indeed, I do know those guys. Yeah, uh, I Flesh, was mm-hmm. when you when you're famous, everybody knows you, right? <laughs> sort of, sort of, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All but right. I do, I do know those guys. Yes, indeed. Okay, yeah. okay. So, um, so let's take questions from fans. Is that okay? Absolutely. That's good. Let's do it. All right. Let's bring up Lori. Lori the Muslim. There she is. Okay, Lori, you're on with Flesh and Bone from Hi, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Here he is. What's your question? I actually have no idea who he is. All right, Lori. Oh. No, that's all right. Forget it. Lori, what is okay. that? You can't. She always. Oh, ridiculous. Tell, okay. Tell, give her some homework to make. Tell her to go. Lori, Google. Google. Go. Google. I didn't know. I didn't know he Bone was going to be on. You didn't tell me. So I. No, no. It's okay, Lori. Go Google it. Just just a little brief ed- education. Bone Thugs and Harmony. It'll mm-hmm. give you a little bit of education. And then maybe we can uh, 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 go from there, hopefully. Yes, yes. I'm Actually, the it. saddest part about that is she's my wrap-up show host. Uh-huh. And, like, she should be Googling the whole show. <laughs> she should yeah. be Googling. Let, let's bring Google. up uh, someone who definitely has a question. His name is Jesse. Jesse, you're on with your friend. What up? Flash. What's up, Jesse? What up, okay. What's up, OG? <laughs> I'm chilling in the trap house right now. What's up, buddy? I see. What's going on, man? Where's Andy, man? Tell I don't know, Andy. man. Motherfucker be fighting in the other room. I'm oh, showing a motherfucker okay. right now. That's you got the up, whole, man. like, here's Hollywood Hills, like, right behind me. We all That's chilling right up. now. Yeah, I got to it real quick. How you been, Flesh? Man, I've been doing good, man. I've been working real hard, man. I've been in Miami. I've been. Uh, Hold on. No, people are yelling, <laughs> seeing the trap house. Sorry. Yeah, oh, no. yeah. I, I shot, like, two videos in one day yesterday and everything, working my ass off, man. 
working my yeah, ass off real. Real, real hard. So I'll be I'll be over there at the trap house next time I hit the L.A., man. I'll be I over cannot there. fucking wait, man, until we have to play tug of war with someone that fucking disrespects. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, okay. Wait, wait Flush, you want to be in that trap house? Why do you want to go there? Oh, yeah, I'll go check them out. I'll go ch- I got to go check out the homies. You feel what I'm saying? I got to go, really? go check out the trap house. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, can't yeah. believe you. So I avoid that trap All we house. up in here is the motherfucking Why? trap water. <laughs> Uh, that's, what that? up. that's what's up. Okay. That's, that's what's up, man. I can't water, believe huh? that Hold flesh on. would want to go Stop there. Yelling. Who's that? Someone's yelling on the fucking on the balcony. Everyone wants to be on the fucking show, you know? Everybody yeah. can be on the show. They just have to wait their turn because a lot of people want to talk to Flesh right what now. And I'm like, girl, Alex on, though. She's my homie from, like, Washington. Okay. I I'm going to put everybody on. So everybody, like but, Jesse, like, Jesse, just stay there. Stay there. So everybody that wants to be on... We'll get a chance with flesh, okay? I'm just telling you that. Like, so nobody get mad or upset or crying at me, okay? Because everybody's going to get a chance. It's just really, really booked right now, okay? Um, okay, so so that was Jesse. Okay. You want to go to the trap house. Unknown oh, yeah. reason. Oh, yeah. Got Unknown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those guys are off the hook. Ton of fun. Ton of fun. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Okay, yeah. let's take another yeah. question. O- Onision, this is a this is a great guy. This is Onision, a friend of the show. What's He's up, Onision? U- the YouTube Hi. star, Onision. You're Hi. on with Flesh and Bone. Hi, indeed. Hi, Onision. So you, you Hi, were nice you, you were you, nice to meet you. You were talking about uh, these godless people and the masks. I w- I was hoping you could elaborate on that because that was really interesting, and I wanted to know like what's going on in your world where you saw godless people in association with masks. Um, great question. Well, I, I, well, well, first of all. Uh, 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 basic science, uh, uh, um, basic science uh, proves, uh, you know, you know, uh, the mask for one, I, I attribute, I, tr- I attribute godlessness to them because first of all, you have people going around talking about they, y- you need to get the earth to zero emissions at a certain point. First of all, godless individuals, because you can never get the earth at zero emissions without wiping out all human life and plant life. First of all, the human being breathes out, breathes in oxygen and emits a, a carbon uh, dioxide. The plant sucks in the carbon dioxide and breathes out oxygen. So all these retarded ass people going around talking about so, wearing your mask. And tra- so they think wearing a mask is a way of say, uh, 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 diminishing the carbon dioxide. In the so I think... I- I don't, I don't, I don't know if this is true or not, but I think it's possible to be carbon negative, and that you have so many things absorbing the negative stuff that's put out to well, the, the environment plants, the, that it actually becomes plants, negative. All of the green plants, all of the green, all of the greenish that you see sucks in that carbon. The, yeah. the green, the green, the green plants cannot breathe without that carbon. It sucks. Right, it right, right. So, so if people are trying to be like carbon neutral, or they're trying not to, you know, emit any carbon, you just have so many plants. That's and you have impossible. So, so, you have so many plants and you have so much uh, of us, you know, uh, ex- exhaling that carbon or whatever, or uh, getting rid of that methane with our farts or whatever. You have yeah. so many plants and so many natural <laughs> elements absorbing that, which mm-hmm. eventually gets you to carbon zero, right? Um, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if I follow you. So you're saying it's like, it's like throwing water. It's like throwing water on a fire, right? So there's a, there's mm-hmm. a fire burning. And so mm-hmm. you dump a bunch of water on it and eventually there's mm-hmm. no fire. Mm-hmm. So okay. Oh, okay, but uh, uh, in, in 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 my opinion, carbon is not a poison. Carbon monoxide is a poison. Too carbon much, di- too much, too much can no, no, be. No, 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 bad. no. Carbon monoxide, poison. Carbon dioxide, food for the plants. Right. So you need a lot so, of plants to absorb that, mm-hmm. but but plants don't rely solely on it, do they? Mm-hmm. Mm. I, I would think that they but resort my, they rely they, on the sun and the, and the they, nutrients in the dirt stuff like that and yes indeed of course so it takes so so how can you attack one source thinking that it's a a, a, a detriment to the planet too when, much is when 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 yeah I, I think too much sun is a detriment too much too much water yeah. is a detriment too much too much of anything too much alcohol too much dope is a detriment I think I think too many I think too many plants plants probably isn't a thing. Um, Yeah, but 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 if you want to get to like carbon neutral or whatever, that just means that you're not adding to the problem. If you if you have an enormous amount of of Mm -hmm. bad pollutants in the environment, Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. that can create, you know, a lot of death for both animals, humans, plants, whatever. Mm -hmm. So you have a bunch of plants counteracting mm -hmm. that and you mm -hmm. eventually get the carbon negative or whatever. And then boom, yeah. problem solved. So that's maybe why they want carbon zero. Like there's still going to be the emissions of, of you know, yeah. vehicles and all that stuff. But there's if there's yeah. enough yeah. stuff to absorb it and maybe Is a lower there? amount going out, you're good. Well, yeah, so I think that's well, what they're talking about. Well, ultimately, ultimately, I think these people are dangerous. And I don't think that these people should be dictating how other people should be living their life. I think people should be free. And, uh, and once you become an adult, you should be able to act like an adult and understand how to be responsible and accountable uh, on how you uh, 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 treat the planet, treat other people, and uh, treat people around you, and treat the animals around you. As an adult, you should be free to be able to do what you want to do and what you're pleased to whatever you want to do as long as you're not being a, a nuisance to the planet so uh, uh people telling me what to do as in i'm a, I'm a grown-ass man i don't need nobody telling me to wear no goddamn diaper mask i don't need mm -hmm. nobody t i don't need nobody telling me how much gas or how far i can drive or how fast i can drive my car or what private jet that i can get on i don't play that i'm not i'm not here for no some, somebody thinking they superior to me telling me what the f to do in my life i'm not with it people like me ain't having it they can kick rocks we not standing for it and uh, uh um yeah yeah we're not we're not playing that game we're, we're, we're the, the people like me we're not playing that game we're not being told what to do that you're, it, it's not gonna it's not gonna work around here i'm sorry buddy i'm sorry okay so so i have a question about that have you run into uh problems with this stance, because I seen, uh, you know, videos of people getting into fights, you know, at uh, Target and, you know, Walmart and everywhere, everywhere. Well, uh, you know, what happens when you refuse, uh, you know, to wear the mask? What happens to you? Well, you could you could you can refuse. You could say no yeah. or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know, certain businesses and facilities or whatnot, to, to a certain degree, have a right to decide to say if they want the people in their establishment to wear a mask. And yeah. if you want to be in their establishment. But, the, you know, some not. It's not like that everywhere. If you don't, if you know, go. If you don't want to wear the mask, then go to the places where you don't have to wear a mask. If you want to go to right. the grocery store, so certain grocery stores, you know, that I've been to, they don't require. It. Some grocery stores do require. It. So, 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 it's uh, it's up to the business owner to a certain degree to uh, uh um, to decide whether or not you know because certain 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 counties, certain states got rid of the mask mandate which is good right. i rather i rather live in a state where there are no mask mandates which is i prefer not to but i yeah, have, yeah. I, I have been in places and uh with it, that require the mask i have been in these places sometimes if i want to wear a mask if i feel if i don't feel like being arguing today then i'll wear the mask if i feel like if, if look i, I don't I, I i ain't playing no games today sometimes I'll walk up in your joint without a mask on. You'll tell me to wear it, and I'll tell you, screw off, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. I'm here to do X, Y, Z and get out of here. But um, um, I'm, not, I'm not here for the conference. For the, look, it's been over a year. The, the scam is up, okay? The shit is... Look, look, the virus is real. It got a lot of old people sick, uh, 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 health deficient, or whatever the case may be, uh, you know, sicknesses or whatever. The, the, the goddamn jig is up. Enough is enough, okay? Yeah. Leave people alone. You dig what I'm saying? Let people get right. back to their life, okay? Leave, leave these people alone. We're, first of all, I'm a red-blooded American, okay? I'm a patriot. I love my country. I don't want... Look, look, I don't got nowhere else to go. I don't have nowhere else to go. You dig? This is the only country I got, okay? This is the country that my children is growing up in. And they're going to be free. I don't care what these people are talking about, these globalists talking about the resets and all that. Fuck your reset. Fuck your globalism. It's coming from me. You dig what I'm saying? My children is growing up in this world, and they're going to grow up in a free country. Okay? Wow. I love your passion about all these things. You're so passionate. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, I love that spirit that you have. Okay, so let's take more questions, I think, right? Um, Charmin, here's uh, Charmin actually ran for president. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. And she's Hi, really Charmin. smart. She has books. She's just a brilliant person. Oh. Charmin, uh, do you have a question for our friend here, Flesh? 
Hi, um, I, I, I do have questions. Hi, it's nice to meet you. How are you doing? <laughs> the pleasure is uh, mine. Really well. Thank you so much. Yeah, before, before we get serious, is there any chance that we're going to get any clips of your recent videos? I know you did some work. Oh, yeah, I know you yeah, got, yeah. might have some fun stuff to share with us. You got anything <laughs> yeah, fun? Yeah, so, 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 well, you know, a lot of, a lot of the stuff is, so I've released a brand new single and video. It's called Dedication. And the song is dedicated to our, the Please loved ones. Um, um, 2020 was such a rough year. A lot of people lost a lot of loved ones and whatnot. And then it's also dedicated to the people that have uh, uh, lost careers, lost businesses, lost jobs, uh, um, um, lost everything, lost homes, and, and still struggling and still making it. And they're still here and they're still surviving. So the song is dedicated to those people the video is out right now on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and look at Flesh and Bone Dedication. A very beautiful video. I've been, uh, I just recorded two new videos and everything called Take Me Out the Game and also another one called Don't Get Fucked Up. And, um, and uh, I have a lot of work on the table right now musically throughout the pandemic. During 2020, I was able to record a lot of great music that I'm trying to roll out right now. I can't, there's so much music, I can't roll it out fast enough. But yeah, when you guys get a chance, go ahead and share that link. It's dedication video. The song is out on all streaming platforms. And uh, you know, I try to uh, make music that 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 heals the world, that improves the world, and that, that at the same time, I can always I can do a kick your ass song too, because I'm tired of these people out here, you know, uh, uh, messing with me and everything. So I write. I I, I can't write a kick. I do, I do write my kick kick your ass song. So you know, you know, I you know, I try to you know stay above board like that. So yeah. That's so great that you're, um, you know, putting your music out there uh, just consistently for all this time. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're sometimes I have a hard time getting like inspired to do that. I have to be what? going through something. I have to uh -huh. really like either uh -huh. be in a bad, horrible relationship, but mainly oh. that actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> yeah. Mean, I mean, well, you know, you're, you're 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 great. You have a great show, and this is a this has all the potential in the world, of course. Uh, 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 to reach billions, it's, it's almost eight, nine billion people on earth. Shows like this has the potential to reach, reach at least two, three billion people. So that's your contribution. You can write songs, you can write poetry, you can write scripts, you can write books, you can write videos, you can write movies, you can write TV shows. You dig what I'm saying? And, and, you, can, and you can put information out there. Information is key. So, you know, what you guys have with a show like this is priceless. Priceless. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's the best thing ever. Thank you for saying that. Uh, we have a caller, uh, Kermit and friends. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. It's really quiet. Hold on one second. Decline that call. Okay. Sorry. Kermit and friends. Hey, Lisa. It's Gonzo. Hey, Gonzo. Hey, I, I've been, I've been rapping lately and I want to know if I can uh, audition for flesh and bones. So wow. You know, oh, okay. Of course. Yes. I'm sure Gonzo. he'd love that. Go ahead, Gonzo. Okay. Go ahead. Go right. for it. Are you ready? Yeah. We're ready. I'm playing the motherfucking beers and go. Motherfucking beers and motherfucking no. Better than the better train. Motherfucking beers and go and say boom. Out. Would you still be encouraging to someone like that, Flesh? I think so. I think so. He's crazy <laughs> enough to do that. Because you, know, yeah. yeah. you got to be crazy, yeah. right? You have to be crazy. You gotta be you yeah, to go for something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's interesting. You know, it takes a lot. That's 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 that was funny. That was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I love you. Got to love people like that, man. It makes the world go round. You know, it's not enough happiness and 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 joy in the world and everything. We need to get back to smiling. We need. To hey, get what's back up, to everyone? Hugging. Jeez. So Jesse keeps texting hey, me saying uh, enough of this. She's not here, Jesse. I would love you to put her on. on? Nope, nope, nope. I'm getting all yeah. these texts from Jesse. I sent her the link. Yeah, I know. Okay. I so did I. I so think did she's I. She was watching, but she didn't log on. My friend Alex Gibson. Um, oh. I wanted her yeah. to get on and do a little bit of a uh, thing, you know. Okay. She, so. she will. She will. Don't don't worry, Jesse. Everybody just... in the trap house is knocking on my goddamn door, wouldn't trap shit from me. I'm like, what's up oh, with that? Oh, oh, okay. Have right. you ever shown Flesh your trap trap house? I don't think I've he's invited seen him it. over, but we do so much other trap shit. This, you know, yeah. he'll make his way around. He'll make his yeah. way around. So. All right, because I, I think I think the reason why he wants to go there is because he hasn't seen it. So, okay, mm -hmm. so so Flesh, I I was wondering. Yes, so I want to connect you with my next guest. 
Okay. Because her name is Lizzie. She's from, uh, she was on the show Infowars and she's going to tell us, I, her, you saw I, her? I think I, I, I've been, I've been, I've been associated, well, not associated, but so, so in my house, that's, it's, 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 it's Infowars and um, other shows like it. Um, educational. So we, I'm, I'm only education. I don't, all that other stuff is, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you got shows like uh, Infowars is the only shows that you have that, you know, do you, if you want to escape the propaganda and all of that other stuff, you know, I, you know, you know, I, I'm, I'm stuck on. So her, Liz, I think I, that, that sounds familiar. I think I know who okay, you're talking so, about. So I'm going to tell you about her. Okay. And hopefully with your positivity and your attitude, you'll hear her story and either want to help her or just like learn something from her. I'm, I'm hoping everybody can get something out of this. So my friend okay. Lizzie, okay, she's a New York mother of three. Okay. Uh, she's a Columbia University grad, so she's smart like you. Okay. Um, she, she speaks out about COVID. Her okay. big thing right now is pedophilia, mm. judicial corruption, mm -hmm. and her children have been kidnapped from her. I think I know who you, yes, I, yeah, I, 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 I think I know exactly who you're talking about. Something like the, uh, what the, did the feds try to take her children or something like that? That's right. Okay. So listen to this. So she's left homeless right now. We're going to help her, you and I. Okay. 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 She's left homeless. Her finances have been stolen from her. This is like a wealthy woman from a very high end, you know, part of New York. Uh -huh. Her her finances has, have been taken from her. She's been falsely arrested. I have a video of her arrest. I'll play it later. Okay. She was falsely imprisoned. So I know that you have had this problem, right? Were absolutely. you falsely imprisoned? Okay, so uh, yeah, Flesh and absolutely. Bone was falsely imprisoned for eight years. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely for the self defense. It was I, I was it was an actual self defense situation. I was defending myself, and then it was trumped up as made 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 me look like some type of. Uh, uh, terrorist, which uh, of course I'm far from, and uh, but yeah, I was uh, pretty much in a situation where I was uh, defending myself, and then uh, and then uh, I, I was arrested for that. Okay, for so years. you so you were falsely arrested for defending yourself. You had a firearm on you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you so somebody was going after you. Mm -hmm. Is this somebody that you knew? I pretty much knew them, and I used the firearm. All that see, see, these are, there are about a, a half a million cases a year where people uh, use a firearm to defend themselves. Had not it been for the firearm, God knows what would have happened. But it was a situation where all I had to do was show the weapon and 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 and, and stop the threat, and and that was it. I didn't have to use it. I brandished the weapon, stopped the threat. That was it. And uh, yeah, it was trumped up to be something way uh, pathetic and way, way outrageous. Yet yeah. uh, something that uh, people shouldn't have to go through. No. Um, and it wasn't fair at all. No. Yeah. So this makes me sick that that can happen. Right. Um, this makes me very sick because, I mean, that's 10 years of your life. You've had such an unbelievable life. Mm -hmm. And like what you could have been contributing to the world in those 10 years that you were in prison. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure... I'm sure when you were in prison, you were helping people in there and, and spreading joy. And, Absolutely. and were, you, were you able to do that when you were in prison Ab for the 10 years? Absolutely. I was uh, able to, you know, be uh, uh, as, as, as fluent and, as, as, yes, definitely spread, uh, 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 give it, uh, information, spread the love or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot to get into in prison, mind you. It's a lot of pros and cons. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, and uh, and uh, but yeah, you know, I was able to remain positive, focused. Um, 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 I'm blessed to be able to stay focused on my craft, my career, and uh, and uh, and eventually, God did uh, return me to uh, all of that, which uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, um, um, that go away for such a long time. You know, ten years is a long time. Um, it sure um, is. Um, um, Were you married, people... Flush? Were you married yes. during yes, that am. time? Yeah. Yes, I was. While, while you were in prison and you had kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, yes, yes, indeed. That my, must have my, been unbelievably I'm here, difficult. I'm here, I'm here with my beautiful wife and beautiful family right now. Yes, indeed. We've been my, um, you have over, almost 20 years now, me and my wife. Wow. That's yes. a good woman right there because that is tough to Absolutely. be away. Absolutely. That is tough. And especially, it just must be so frustrating. Mm -hmm. And I would think that mm -hmm. if you're falsely imprisoned for something, taken away from your family, mm -hmm. 
uh, you would be so angry, but I don't like sense any mm -hmm. anger really from you. No, 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 um, no. Not, so not, that's not, something hard to understand. Well, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Well, to a certain degree, you know what I'm, after, after going through what we just went through with this whole pandemic and this lockdown, guess what? I am pissed off. Okay. Okay. I okay. am angry. I am angry. And this is what these people are playing with fire because it's people like me that mm -hmm. are fucking pissed off. Okay. We're not okay. standing for this shit. We're not okay. doing it. We're not doing it. We're angry. We will do something about it. Don't don't mind. We'll we'll protect ourselves intellect. We'll do what the we'll do what we need to do. All that violence. Don't see this was this was what's wrong with the other side. They're full of violence, they're full of anger, they're full of hatred, and then they'll accuse you for doing exactly what they're doing. You see what I'm saying? You said who would like, I'm not gonna say no names, but look at who's look and look and see the name of the organizations of the people who are in the streets burning down buildings, burning down businesses and stuff like that. And then and then these are the people that are in the streets causing violence, causing causing all this the mayhem and anarchy and all of that stuff. And they got a nerve. And just because I'm a patriot, you dig what I'm saying? Oh, I'm no, 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 no. I'm a patriot. You dig what I'm saying? I want to keep my country free. I want to live in a free country. You dig what I'm saying? And I don't like people trying to turn it into something else. So I'm the enemy. No, they're the enemy. You dig what I'm saying? So yes. yeah, yeah. But you're right. The 10 years in prison, it, it taught me a lot. It, it taught me a lot, and then uh, and Hold uh, on. But, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay, I'm getting a call. Yes, Kermit and friends. Hi, Lisa. How are you? It's Barry Boss. Oh my gosh, Barry, I'm a little busy right now. I'm talking to Flesh and Bone. I'm about to bring on Lizzie, the uh, star of Infowars, and he's going to help me. I hey, think because um, you're ready to talk to Lizzie from Infowars. Yeah, yeah, Lizzie from Infowars. So, uh, Lizzie, Barry, what's Lizzie, up? Do you have a Lizzie question for Bone Thugs and Harmony, uh, Flesh? Can you hit that up no, for me? I, I, I just want to say hello. If I hey. know what to do, you know, um, uh, I don't know what to tell you. It's like you're hey. too busy for Barry Boss these days. It's like becoming, I need you a star. And it's like I blew your shit off along with Wig and. Now you're too busy for both of us. You I'm not too busy. You guys are just late. Like, if you're late, you're not going to be able to get in the show. And I'm just sorry. That's just the truth. And I love you both. I love you and I love Quig. But, you know, I have a very famous guy here that's really nice. And a lot of people want to talk to him. And a lot of people want to talk to Lizzie, too. And uh, so it's hard for me to accommodate everybody. Happened to, uh, to Alex? Wars, you know, oh, Alex that. Jones? Well, I'm going to ask her about that. I'm going to ask her about Alex Jones. But call me back later, okay, buddy? Love you. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I love um everybody that's trying to call and get on the show right now. And that's I do good. not, I do not want anybody to feel, like, slighted by me. Okay. And I just yeah. want to say to people that have something to say that um you're all going to get a chance. But Absolutely. if you have something to say, you could write it in the chat. Or um, there's going to be a wrap-up show after this show where everybody's going to be talking about Flesh. Everybody's going to be talking about Onision and Lizzie. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk to Lizzie. This is Lizzie. She okay. is a great person. She was just on InfoWars and actually a lot of other shows. And uh, mm -hmm. she's an incredible story. She's going to tell us her story right now. Awesome. This is an unbelievable okay. story. She's been kidnapped. She's been wrongfully arrested. She's been... Her life has been torn apart, all her money taken away from her. Okay, this is not fair, mm. and we're going to help her. So if you're watching Kermit and Friends, and you can mm. help, please reach out to me. It's very easy to reach okay. out to me, and we're going to help our friend Lizzie. Here's Lizzie. Hey. Hey. How are you? Great, Fashion Lizzie. Bones, preach, hi, man. I'd hi. You're talking about hi, Lizzie. Intention. You're talking yes. about faith. You're talking about sovereignty. You're talking about being a good patriot and accountability. Absolutely. Those are all my things, man. And those are all my things, too. And by the way, I know who you are, Lizzie. It's great to meet you. I've seen you on uh, InfoWars. I've watched you. And uh, and uh, I'm a big follower of, uh, of, of that type of material and stuff like that. It's great to meet you. How are you? Thank you. Well, you know, um, I finally, after 11 months, was able to get into a home. And then after my show oh. was on InfoWars, there was a random house fire in the oh, middle no. of the night in what? my rental home. Yep. Oh, no. And, that's hard um, to hear that. And so then I, I'm homeless now again. I oh, have some wow. Of my, like, random okay. clothes because most of my clothes were smoke damaged and I'm trying to clean them now. Uh, oh, wow. So, so, so Lizzie, that yeah. fire, I mean, that's just it's, such wow, a weird time. Yeah. 
it's such a weird timing for you to just be on Infowars and then immediately after your house being burned down, do you think? It wasn't burned down. I don't want to exaggerate. My story okay. is crazy enough that there's no mm -hmm. reason to ever exaggerate one part of it. But what happened was in the middle of the night, um, there was a fire in the walls. It turns oh, wow. out they're saying Electrical it started fire. from the HVAC system. The oh. HVAC guys happened to be here two or three days earlier. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, could it all be coincidental? Of course. It's just all, it's just, it's just a cluster. But mm -hmm. anyways, I was, so I'm doing as well. You know, you got to stay positive. You got to, every single yes, you time do. they hit you, you got to get back up. Yeah, you got, you have to, you have to. You're very resilient. You're very resilient. You have to be yeah. resilient. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Thank indeed. you. So, so uh, how's it going with your kids, Lizzie? Are you able to see your kids? No. So here's the thing. My husband, after I found out my husband was a pedophile, and um, he mm -hmm. went and disappeared for a few weeks uh, for, and tried to have me taken against my will. He signed mm -hmm. contracts with people to falsify medical documents to have me uh, put away falsely in a um, mental institution. He's a fucking psychopath. Right. So, but I had his iPad, so I had all the contracts. I had the emails back and forth, and then the idiot put the payments on my credit card. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I had oh my so gosh. I found all the information. I confronted everybody. I stopped it dead in his tracks. But my husband is a partner. Uh, his name is Brian Stryker Weinstein. And he's a partner at Davis Polk and Wardwell. He's a lawyer, a litigation partner. Mm. So he then went to the courts and got an order of protection against me and included the kids. Now the kids were 17, almost 16, and 13, right? Mm -hmm. So the kids were with me. While my husband was estranged and missing and abandoned me mm -hmm. and the children, wouldn't even like talk to us about normal things. I kept trying to reach out to him. And he, would, he got an order of protection against me, included wow. the kids, against the kids' wishes and will, and then had the police come and evict me from the home and make my children stay with him. And my children were like, no, we don't want to stay with him. That guy's a pedophile. And he left. Mm. And Wow. Um, and the cops, no fair. the cops literally, Sergeant Bassett and Officer mm. Raphael and this woman, Bridget Dale, who was a lawyer friend of ours, who was there helping my husband, but I didn't know that at the time. I thought she was mm -hmm. helping me, um, lied and said that, mm -hmm. no, the, the courts refused to meet with them. Exactly. So that right there tells you how corrupt the courts are. The kids went wow. to the court and asked and said, that we don't want to be included on this like this is ridiculous and the courts refused to interview them and then when they said to the police well if my mom's getting kicked out of the home we're going with her this is crazy we want to stay with her the police lied and said um if you go with her we're gonna to have to arrest her for kidnapping oh and that's why i want people my story to get out there because i want people to know their rights because that's a blatant lie mm -hmm. and if my kids got in the car with me and we left we wouldn't be here this day but like you you don't think like these policemen are lying to you to try and kidnap your children. You don't think the people are on it. You have like a sense of decency mm -hmm. and honesty about this. So when they told me that, we believed them. When they mm -hmm. said, no, you can't go with your mom. She'll be arrested for kidnapping. We believed them. And right. to this day, my children have been locked in the house with their pedophile father. And uh, oh. the courts refuse to speak with him. I've issued subpoenas to have my kids come to court to be heard. And uh -huh. if the court squashes the subpoena, they instead have a lawyer mm -hmm. that is hired and paid for by my pedophile husband who wow. represents the kid's interest in court. And the lawyer will say, oh, I met with the kids and they don't want to see their mother. And then she'll wow. submit a bill for her hours. And at no point did she meet with my kids that month. So it's right. all blatant. It's, it's just but how are they doing this yeah. to you, uh, Lizzie? That's I don't incredible. understand that. Yeah, I don't understand yeah, that. If, if you're her husband, so uh -huh. so did they ever prove that he was like doing uh, you know pedophilic acts or anything? Anything? Uh, I have it from my husband in writing. I mean, I have mm -hmm. it from my husband in writing. Okay. Here, let's let's put Lizzie on the screen. Just hold on one second, Flesh. Let's just put this on the screen. Okay, so okay, so, so what is, is that? My, this is on May twenty first. We confronted my husband. The kids and I confronted my husband on May 20th, right? He then goes, leaves the house on the morning of May 21st, and he gets this marriage counselor to call and say, uh, uh, hey, Lizzie, I know that you're clear and linear in your thinking, and I know that you're not a threat to yourself or others, but um, we're going to have the police come and pick you up and bring you to a mental institution, and you should just believe us. You should just trust us. And I was like, fuck no. 
That's gaslighting. And that's what every pedophile tries to do to its victims and to the supportive parent. Is they, they, they have no other recourse when the truth comes out. So they just say, don't listen to her. She's, she's crazy, right? It's the dumbest fucking thing. It's called the Martha Mitchell effect. So anyway, um, they tried doing that. And I, I thwarted it. I was like, I'm absolutely not. You guys are stupid. Brian, you're going to ruin your law career. What are you doing? And then Brian afterwards wrote to me and said, I'm sorry I did that. It wasn't in your best interest. I, 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 it was nefarious and I was colluding with Jeff. And yes, I understand I'm, a, you know, because I've been indoctrinated into pedophilia and I have this history of pedophilia, I can't be around children. So I'll stay at a hotel. And yes, I want this to get better. I mean, he specifically says, yes, I married you for your goodness and strength and I want the indoctrination of pedophilia to stop. And I was like, and do you acknowledge my concern? It's inappropriate to have you stay around children when you've been indoctrinated into a pedophile. And then he doesn't answer. And I'm like, Brian, enough. Like, yeah, yes or no. Like, I'm done playing with you. And then he writes back, yes. And I say, thank you, Brian. You, that is brave of you. You're showing me your goodness. At this point, I really, like, I understood my husband had a lifelong history with pedophilia. So I really thought that he fucked up. And he made a bunch of mistakes and I saw his online stuff that he was doing and I thought he was just going to come clean and that we were going to try and help him. Right. Like I just. Was, was he trying to meet up with children? What was he uh, trying to do? I don't go in. I'm going to be very clear about this. I don't go into all of the exact details that I have about my husband because every single time that I go into something and I, I show what I have, he then goes and either either destroys the evidence or comes up with a plan behind it. Right. So all I don't go into any more evidence than I have it from my husband in writing. He left the house. He was a pedophile. He has a lifelong history of pedophilia. He was abused as a child. And then once he identified the guy as an abuser, this guy, Ron Barry, who was his high school vice principal, who used to take troubled boys away with him on weekend trips and get them drunk and climb into bed with him with other men. OK, other grown men. Brian this was one of Barry's boys and he talks about it. Brian then, after identifying Mr. Barry as a pedophile, right? Brian and I met in our late 20s. And I found all these letters that Brian saved from his pedophile abuser his whole life. And I was like, this is weird. Why are you saving these letters? And then Brian kind of like opened up and came to terms and acknowledged Mr. Barry was a pedophile. My husband went to Yale Law School. He's a Duke AB scholar. He's a smart, well-respected person. And we don't look at those people as being pedophiles. We look at those people as the reputation, the fake reputation that they're trying to purport to everybody, right? So even after Brian knew this guy was a pedophile, even after he talked about how this guy would get drunk, take boys away on weekend trips, climb into bed with them, bring other adult men with them, and then they wouldn't remember anything the next day, even after that, my husband went and spoke at Mr. Barry's retirement party as the keynote speaker and referred to Mr. Barry as one of the greatest men that ever lived. Right. It's just, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. But in my sick mind, right, you don't think the man that you're having sex with is getting sexual gratification from the children. So I don't think, oh God, that means my husband's a pedophile too. I think my poor husband has such Stockholm syndrome that he can't understand that he still has this affection for his abuser. That's how I um, made sense of it all these years. I caught him grooming my kids. I, you know, like stuff. And there was always an excuse. There was always a reason. He'd walk around the house and just- Wait, gr and Wait grooming your kids? Yeah, he would walk in on them and he'd be like, where's, you know, where's your, the children? And I'd say, don't go in there, they're in the shower. And this is like, they're old enough, they shouldn't be walked in on the shower. And he would walk right in. And I'd grab him by the back of the neck and I'd pull him out and I'd be like, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? You can't walk in on them in the shower. I told you that. And he'd go, oh, sorry. I forgot that you told me that that was wrong. Like, But was, he's with your kids right now. Yeah, I know, babe. I'm aware. It's fucking horrific. It's disgusting and it's horrific. And this is what I, um, this is, you know, one of the things that Flesh and Bone might you talk to too, is that the judicial system that we think is there to protect us mm -hmm. is actually there as a, a, a means to traffic people and to exploit yeah. them, right? That's all they do. They put you in prison and then they get money for that, right? They Absolutely. get money, they get paid for, yeah. for the number of prisoners that they have in there. They 
you know, yeah. have these, they keep fathers away from their children and then they mm -hmm. extort them for child support for children that these fathers aren't even allowed to see. Absolutely. Our criminal system and our justice system that we think are there for our, our benefit are actually there as organizations to control and extort us. So um, the, the, the child protective services is really child trafficking services. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's disgusting. So it are, in, put, to put it this way, this is how well known this is. In 2012, but what's the well U.S. Known? Department Yo, what up? of Justice, hey. hey G. Ryder, the U.S. Department hey, of Justice doing? came out with what's called the Saunders Report. And the Saunders Report said that in over 70% of the cases, when a case yeah. of child abuse came to the court, the judge gave the children to the abuser knowingly. Well, Why? Because then the non-abusive parent fights back. Then the non-abusive parent will fight for the children and then it drums up business for the court. So that was Technically, I was a victim when I was younger as well. You were, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, well, I enjoyed shit. Okay, when I was 13, my girlfriend was 18. When I was 16, when I got out of my class, because I graduated college when I was 16, went to OU, my girlfriend, well, not girlfriend. My teacher was 47. Her husband oh was God. a principal. So I was 16 and she was 47. But, this you know, is I like a the, the wow. idea of the woman as a pedophile. Is something I'm just saying that was like some of the right? best times. Like I always preferred older, you know? Yeah. Oh, you liked it, Jesse? Fuck yes, I liked it. That shit was fucking great. Okay, oh. this isn't, I, at least I'm sorry. This I'm saying this is exactly the opposite of what you're saying, though. I'm just saying technically stuff, it was illegal. But I thought I actually got arrested how much fun I was having. Oh my god. That that's not the type of thing we're talking yeah, about right now. But um listen, this so, is so stuff. Yeah. so what can we do? You've told your story on InfoWars, you've told your story on Kerman and Friends. Yes. You're getting your story out there. Is it is that helping at all yeah. uh, get justice? Well, it's amazing. It really the thing is I, I had thousands of viewers on Instagram and then the day that I had a fight, um, my Instagram account got uh, taken down. So all of the videos of the false arrests, I, I haven't even got into on January 4th, I went to file documents with the court to show how the court was protecting the pedophile and how they were uh, kidnapping the children and not giving me access to the court to be heard. And they arrested me for not wearing a mask. And that's when I was put into solitary confinement for five days. Um, oh, I think I have that video. Yes. Wait, it's Lizzie with the mask. Oh, wait, hold on one second, yeah. uh, Onision. Let me just play this video I have of you. Li I just uh, saved it as Lizzie mask problem. Here it is. Okay. Side, you got to go on without a mask. Oh, no, this is Go outside, go outside and talk about that. Go outside and talk about that. Just a minute, please, ma'am. No, you just a minute. She's telling you to exit. Excuse me, sir. I'm telling you to exit now. Please stay six feet away. No, you step out. Sir, you are violating. You are violating. Wow. Wow. You're violating. 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 You um, they'll come within, like, it's so stupid. It's all bogus and bullshit. I love that, that flesh and bones kept saying the jig is up. That's exactly it. It's yeah. masks are a means of control. They are not a, a, anything to do with your health. The sheer fact that they're saying you have to wear masks to protect other people. But now if you've been vaccinated, you don't have to wear masks, but if you're unvaccinated, you have to wear masks for what, who are we protecting? Like they've all been vaccinated. So what's the logic is, is gone. There's nothing there. It's just a logical fallacy. Wait, I was just sent this other video. I think this might be it. Hold on one second. Um, I sorry. will take that off. Excuse me. Don't yell at me. Uh, you you were the, the one who were yelling. I'm not bringing you to the level you guys. I gave you the chance. I counted down like a mother to a child. A child can figure out a countdown, but you can't. Baby, I was leaving. Do you see how upset you are, yeah. officer? Do you see how you're the one yelling? Yeah, and then you're trying to tell people, me. Yeah, because when you're trying to do something wrong and you can't do something wrong against somebody who's a good fucking person. There are people out in the lobby who are nervous to go deal with what they have to do because the way you're acting. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I want my phone immediately. No, what are you doing? I got to take your purse. It's not over there. Why? Why? Yes. 
Yeah, I'm not grabbing anything, sir. You're being yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. The after part. They, they're not. They're not very nice. Those guys. Onision, do you have a question for Lizzie there? Uh, if I can, thank you for first of all just letting me talk. Um, it's really awesome. I didn't, I didn't think I was gonna be able to. This is so awesome talking to you. Um, both both of you. Uh, first of all, I just want to know: Do you have any siblings? I do. I do you have, have oldest... you have parents too? Yeah, my father was a pedophile. So this is what people need to understand. It is a cult, and when and cults don't like defectors. Sorry, so just you... real quick. What did what did your father do that made you feel that way? He abused. He sexually abused us. All of you. Well, I know that he sexually abused me and my sister. I don't know about my brother, but my brother has an extreme violent temper. Okay. When, um... Why are you asking the specific questions? Uh, I was just I was just wondering, like, OK, so normally when people go homeless, uh, it's because they have literally no one who's willing to take them in. Interesting. So let me talk about that, because I see that this is an attempt to kind of make it seem like I'm somehow like unworthy of being taken in. by other All, people. I, all I'm doing Sorry. is trying to, to put some reason behind this, because it like like, first of all, like you have a background, you're inside a, a place right now. What's going on there? Yeah. I, well, did you miss the part where I said that I was able to rent a place and then the, the main house caught on fire? So that's the and guest house. And She's in a guest I, house. I was. I'm not in I, I heard all, earlier in the stream that you're very, you're very wealthy too. Is, is that true? Yeah, that's true. I am very wealthy, and all my finances were cut off. Over two hundred and forty thousand dollars of my money. They were all in one bank account. Was dissipated. Yep. Was taken when I was falsely arrested. When they put me in prison for no mask. All okay. Of a sudden, um, Mark Davidson, the COO of City Private Bank, and my husband Brian Stryker Weinstein closed all my accounts and had checks issued to my husband. And again, then, again, thank you so much for talking to me yeah, um, so I, far. Um, how I long you want you want to kind of direct the conversation, but not really hear the truth. Do you want to hear the truth, Onison? No, it's it means I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with your answer. And I wanted to move on to the next question. Mm -hmm. That's it. OK, um, if that's OK. Um, I was just wondering, how long has the thing with the courts and, and, and the police and everything? How long? Like, when did that start? Yeah, the, the first you. issue. That's with... a good question. That first started. I. Um, my husband left the house on May 21st, and he. it's important to note that he was the one that first brought the police. And 2020. The into it. I'm sorry? 2020. It'll be 2020, yeah. It'll be a year right. this, this month. Okay. Um, have your kids ever had a chance to, to speak in court? No, the courts won't hear from them directly. The court prevents them from being heard from, which is right there. That's the most egregious sign to say that the courts are in on it. Because a 17-year-old kid, like, it's ridiculous. And that started from the very beginning. On June 5th, my children went to the court themselves and said, like, why are you including us on an order of protection? Our, my father's a pedophile. He left weeks ago after we talked about his pedophilia. We don't want to go with them. We're safe with our mom. And what's interesting is DSS was in our house because of the pedophilia investigation. And so it's on record that the children do were you, safe. Do you, have any, do you have anything other than hearsay? Like any, uh, any, like, so do you have like tweets? It's do you have really tweets from, how you do you have, to me in that I'm way. not trying to, I'm just asking, for, well, I'm just asking because anyone, anyone can say anything. So any, really no, 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 anyone, I love anyone, it. anyone can say anything online yeah, and, no, and lots of, and lots of people. I'm giving you any hearsay. I have exactly. Well, I'm hearsay talking. is where you say something without proof. Exactly, so, honest, and I've not I've not said one thing without proof. I can show you the court transcripts. I can that's why. Show you the records, that's why I asked. I everything, yeah, and it was all on my Facebook, honest. And so, once again, I want people to see this because this is exactly what they do. They get these other people to come I'm in they. and insert little doubts. I'm not doing anything. I was just asking I know, questions. I know why this is happening, you guys. I know why this is mm -hmm. happening. So, <laughs> so Onision. I, all the video. No, no. Everything that I said. I was just asking. I was just asking. I was asking if you had any proof. That's all. So you're so embarrassed. People love when I call them out and they get caught. No, I was just asking for proof. I was just asking for any any proof. It's all on Facebook. All right. Just just a real just a real quick just a real quick psychology thing. Just a real just a real quick. Just I just quick, just a real quick one more thing to try and insert doubt. Go ahead, honestly. No, this is this is the next thing. This is the next thing. Moving on. Yeah. Okay. So um, in those pathetic right now, by the way. There's no okay. hearsay. All the evidence is there, including police <laughs> records, videos of the arrest. I love talking the, to you. This is this is so great. With the, the right. Turn down the subpoenas. You look really bad about this, but go ahead. Okay. Um, You're so, so embarrassed. Look at how red you are. See, that's what yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah, it's embarrassment. Sure. Um, 
Where no. Okay. So I noticed that in those videos, when you're talking to people who had to go through extensive training to get the positions that they had, the uh, people who have checks and balances and so forth. No, can you, sorry. You can you, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just saying, I noticed, I noticed that like 99.9% .9 of the rest of society isn't having problems with, with those individuals. Like for instance, if I was, a, I, hold on, let me, let me, let me tell you when I was, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I'm not, I'm not trying to do, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to help you with something. No, they're not. No, they're not all amazing. Some cops, some cops are really messed up. Some cops are really messed up. Honestly, I'm done talking to you about this stuff. You're really pathetic with So Lizzie, Lizzie, I think you would like Onisi. I think you would like him. If you just knew where he was coming from, I actually yeah. know. No, let, let me explain. I can spot it a mile away. No, no, I don't think you know about him. He was falsely accused, Lizzie. Lizzie oh, yeah, he, yeah, no. He yeah, was falsely yeah. accused. He's coming from a place. No, Alisa, listen to me. I appreciate you for trying to have an audience. But hey, it's okay. You can cut me out. It's fine. She doesn't want me. Insert doubt as to the evidence that's on the case. Once the Instagram got cut down, so thousands of people were going on that and seeing all the evidence, and not the same number of people aren't logged on to Facebook, but everything's there. Yeah, but there are I millions of Democrats and there are millions segment. of Republicans. You know, I popularity means nothing. Using this segment as a chance to try and insert doubt, Elisa, and I can't say I know that Honest is doing it. And I have to say, if you're having the platform for this, it, I have to question whether or not that was your intention. No, okay. So let, let me just say one thing. So you know how you're coming from a place of hurt right now? Like no, you're hurt. I'm not coming from a you're place not? of hurt. I'm coming from a place of knowledge and strength. I know when somebody's trying to gaslight other people. I know when Are somebody's you think trying to gaslight other I know when somebody's trying to insert doubt and lay plausible deniability to try and give a pedophile and courts a chance at their egregious actions and say that some of this is unreasonable and that I'm not a credible person and what I'm doing and saying is hearsay. So if you want to use your platform for that, Elisa, you go ahead and do it. But don't blame me for spotting it a mile away. I've been a victim of incredible gaslighting. That's the one thing. My husband is the best at this, the best. He's amazing at it. Why? Because he knows how to mix the love in with the arsenic. So it's not bad all the time. He knows how to give it love and arsenic, right? But I can mm -hmm. see their fucking things. Do you see the way he turned bright red? He knows what he's doing is wrong. He knows he's trying to lay plausible deniability. I've got no fucking time for this kind of stuff. I actually have three briefs that I have to write. And I came on the show because I was hoping to really have an interesting discussion where people could educate themselves about the human rights atrocities that are going on right now and about how our judicial system is so corrupt and it's being used as a system by which to create tyranny. Judges aren't accountable for any of their actions. I've been imprisoned. I've been poisoned. I've been taken against my will, my money closed, and I've never been allowed a day in court. I've never been proven guilty of one thing. I'm not even allowed to defend myself. So if your users, I mean, your viewers want to learn about that and educate themselves about that, that's one thing. But I'm not going to go on the show just to create this drama and this, you know, give my husband a chance to insert shards of doubt as to my credibility. So what do you want people to know? How, how can people be helped through this story? What do you want people to really know, like to use a platform or use any platform? Like what, what do you want people to take from this? Sure. What I want people to know is first and foremost, this isn't just my story. People giving, people getting um, uh, kidnapped by abusive process. Abusive process is when they go through the courts, right? CPS is taking away children and, and there's parental kidnappings. So there's a trafficking of children right now in our court systems, a trafficking of children in plain view. Okay, and it's been going on for decades, but because of COVID and having this COVID confusion, it's happening at a fever pitch, okay? So children, and it's happening, the kidnappings are happening by the police, the kidnappings are happening by hospitals, and the kidnappings are happening by judicial order, okay? It's happening all throughout the world. Go do a little research and understand that this isn't messing around anymore. These people are here and they're trying to take over humanistic control. It started with a mask and that gets to see who's compliant and who isn't. And then they're using these COVID bullshit laws that are all unconstitutional. They're not even laws, they're recommendations. They're using that as means by which to have plausible deniability to arrest you, to kidnap you. You go into a hospital, 
and you decide that you don't like what the doctor's telling you and you try and leave against medical advice, they won't let you leave. Go do your research. There's kidnappings in Europe. There's kidnappings in Canada. There's kidnappings in New York. There's kidnappings in California. It's happening all over the world. People need to educate themselves about this and understand that this is all about humanistic control. And you either stand up and you fight against it or you can com comply. So it, it's, it's more about people educating and helping themselves. Hi, Sharman. Hi. How, I would like to ask you how you are, but you're tough as a box of nails if I ever saw it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, as an I'm adult sure survivor, I. as a, an adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse, I really um, connect with your story and your pain and your situation. And there's like a million questions I'd like to ask, but I I don't want to trigger you. I don't want to upset you. I'm absolutely not working with your husband. And I don't want there to be any confusion about that because I, I legitimately have a few questions that that I I need to understand Go so ahead. I can piece together Ask the rest away. of the So away. you said that you were aware that your spouse had a lifetime of pedophilia. When did you become aware of his pedophilic tendencies? When did I stop seeing him as a victim and start realizing that he was actually an abuser? Yes. Yeah. That was in that was in May of 2020. It, it all happened quickly. Within when as did you I realized it? I confronted him about it. And, so and when did you meet? How when did you meet? How long were you married? A, a timeline. Yeah, we were together for 21 years. We met in 1999. And again, for years, I had made it made sense in his mind. Like there were things that happened where like a pedophile was at my kid's camp and the FBI descended upon the camp. Right. And and had to arrest this guy who had been a camp counselor there for 30 years. It was disgusting. Mm -hmm. And the camp didn't notify us, didn't notify us. Mm -hmm. And my husband defended the camp. That's fine. What's your problem with that? You're creating trouble. Why are you bothering our daughter? Like he would do shit like that. And I was like, what are you talking about? So in my mind, every time, and he's a lawyer, I'm thinking he's a lawyer. Oh, your father is going to go after that camp and like get my daughter home and safe. No, he defends the camp, defends the pedophiles. And in my mind, leaves her there. Time, I said, oh, well, that is because he's got Stockholm syndrome and he just can't deal with his own abuse. You understand? But in 2020, we were home under COVID. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the shelter in place orders lifted. I was very involved in, in doing some COVID work. And um, I started reading a lot. I love this. See, Lizzie's story is faker than Elisa's now. Give me a break. I mean, who, who, this is like, again. You'll, you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. Some right. of it's entertaining. Some of it's yeah. not. You'll get used to it. Yeah. I don't like that one either. <laughs> right? Like, you put up the stuff we don't like as much as the stuff we do like. You just, yeah. you know, it's... And now, it's just total stupidity. There's nothing that I say. I speak from a point of truth and integrity always because my story is so ridiculous. It doesn't need an ounce of exaggeration. So all everything that I say, I have the facts to back it up and I have the evidence to back it up and I put it all on social media, which is why he got freaked out and took it all down. To me, the scariest thing is after knowing all this about your husband, knowing he's a pedophile, that he's right. still with the kids. That's yeah. the worst part about this whole thing. Well, that's that what you have to understand, that it took me a while to like get my head around. The courts traffic children to pedophiles and abusers. The courts are a, a legal, it's legal because it's done in the court. The court is a legal mechanism for our mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. to traffic mm -hmm. children to pedophiles and abusers. And they do it knowingly. Like I said, the Saunders report came out and that was in 2012. It's only gotten worse. That's nine years ago. Nine years ago, they said in over 70% of the time, they will knowingly, purposely give the children to the pedophile first, to the abuser first, because then the non-abusive parent fights back. Hey, Kevin. What the yeah, fuck does that annoy you? Yeah, that, that's got to annoy you when people say, she didn't protect her children because you've been trying to get your children back this whole time. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, the truth of the matter is I didn't see the danger in my husband. I did protect my children from pedophiles and abusers outside the home. I didn't look for it inside my home. And right. it's, 
Because why would you? This is a guy that you loved. You were in love with him. He's one of the top attorneys. I mean, he really is. I mean, he's such a successful person. He's so connected. Like, I think things are different for people like that. People that are unbelievably connected, people that are, you know, rich, very rich, Mm -hmm. have all the connections in the world. They could get away with more. So you trust them. You and you trust them. Of security. You have a false sense of security. And again, you don't think that the man that you're having sex with is getting sexual gratification from children. And so, yes, as soon as I found out, that was that's what I'm saying. This all happened very quickly. I found out. I confronted Brian. He went missing for weeks, tried to have me taken against my will, then came back with a bogus court order from a judge who was not in our district that included the children when the children against the children's wishes without the children's knowledge and and against their consent right they had no consent to include them the children all wanted to stay with me so he got that order of protection and had me evicted by the police and here's another thing on that day on june 5th when he got this order of protection he doesn't have an order of protection against him i never got one i tried to get one when things started going bad but the cops were stonewalling me and i couldn't understand why and now I know it was because they were helping him get one against me. So anyways, he gets this order of protection on June 5th. And then instead of coming and saying, here, I have this order of protection against you. Hey, kids, come with me. And just doing it non-traumatically, he called the fucking police on us and had the police come and mandate that the children go with him, right? My husband had the police get involved right from the get-go. So that happened on June 5th. June 6th, I filed for divorce. June 6th, I was like, this is cruel and inhumane. I filed for divorce citing cruel and inhumane and um, it's been it's been a year trying to get back to my kids. Oh my gosh. Um, Alex, any thoughts on this story? A uh, great many. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, perfect. Okay. Sorry, I was Hi, just Alex. having problems with my headset previously. Um, I actually can relate to your story a great deal. Um, I recently found out my first boyfriend is in prison currently for molesting his eight-year-old daughter. And I guess uh, my question for you is just how do you cope with something like that, knowing that, you know, someone you love has done something like that. And you still love that person. Does the love just go away? Yeah, it doesn't because, you know, I still find myself dreaming about him a little bit. And Um, I I do care, but I also kind of hope, like, he dies a little bit. It's been really hard. Sorry, I didn't expect to get so uh, it's been Sorry. It's been. It's That's okay, like, Alex. It's okay. You have to deal. With, no, I'm glad that you asked. Thank you for asking. It's it's traumatic to think about what your kids are going through, and to know that all the uh, organizations that you think are out there to protect your kids, like Child Protective Services, like the police, like the courts, are actually there, knowingly trafficking in your children. But I think even worse than that was this idea that, um, you know. My husband's manipulating and lying to our children, and he's telling, he's getting them to be compliant by saying that if they contact me in any way, that I'll go to the, I'll have to go to jail. That it's required by law. If they contact me, I'm going to have to go to jail, and so they should never contact me again, right? And so, you know, you would think that all these good people in our town would go to my children and be like, dude, that's not true. That's not true. Why, you have a right to have a relationship with both your parents. You are old enough. This is not true. Anybody that tells you that is lying to them. Why are you letting this lawyer speak for you? The lawyer said you didn't want to see your kids, your mother on Christmas. Why don't you do this, right? Um, and nobody will help my kids. Like not one person has gone and sat down with my kids and tried to tell them the truth. And that's like horrific. That's when you realize we are in a society that supports pedophilia. And either people are only traumatized from their own response from being abused as a child, or they engage in the practice, or they're just, they don't want to deal with it. But we live in a society that supports the abusers and the pedophiles and not the innocent children. Flash. Hey, yes. Flash. Hey, hey, Lizzie. Yes, this is, this is really, really uh, stunning. I'm at a loss of words right now. Wow, this is, this is incredible. That's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah. That's okay, uh, buddy. That's okay, Flesh. This is a lot. I know this is a lot. Um, your audio is kind of weird right now, Flesh, but um, maybe you could fix uh-huh. it or your audio my, like my, changed. My audio it changed. Oh my god! Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Let's just see. just fix your audio because uh, I know Flesh can help if anyone. Um, so I yeah, just want to say, yeah, he's amazing. The flesh is amazing. And and yeah. so are you, Lizzie. 
Thanks. And, and I just want to say to the people here right now, right? Everybody that's listening to, to Lizzie's story, maybe you can't relate to the exact story that she's telling, but people can relate to the pain, right? So, you know, we all feel pain in our life and we feel like helpless and we just want things to be different and we feel wronged. So if you can, you know, relate to Lizzie in that way, you know, just reach out to her because she's a really nice person. She's just going through a lot of pain right now. And, uh, you know, she, well, she, Kermit, she, I'd yeah. like to speak a little bit about the, the facts that do relate to everybody. This okay. issue of a judicial immunity affects us all. So this is what you need to understand. I was arrested for not wearing a mask. It's not unlawful to not wear a mask, okay? So to be arrested is wrong. To never been given a trial on that is wrong. To never been given an arraignment is wrong. People need to pay attention that our police are using this COVID bullshit to lay plausible deniability why they can falsely arrest you. So now what's happening, the police arrest you, you go to jail, I file a federal lawsuit, and then the same police who were defendants in my lawsuit then kidnap me and, and drag me in front of the same judge, okay? None of that's lawful, but it, why is it happening? Because there's something called judicial immunity. Judicial immunity means that a judge can do anything that he wants, and they claim that they're allowed to do it because it's the only way that justice will be served. And if they're held accountable for their decisions and actions, then we can't really have a court of justice. And there's a tenet of that that says, well, if they act outside the color of the law, so if they do something illegal, they're supposed to be held accountable. But that's not what's happening. We're not holding our judges accountable. So therefore, the judges do whatever the hell they want. And we, as a people, are living under judicial tyranny. And that's why people like Flesh and Bones get put in jail. For Ten years he got yeah. put in jail. Falsely yeah. accused. I just want to say, it's actually... You guys are actually like behind. It, it gets worse in in the UK. It's absolutely out of hand with pedos, right? What happens is they get what's called a uh, suspended sentence, where they don't actually see the inside of a jail cell, and uh, it can be historic crimes, it could be multiple rapes, it could be anything, and they won't even see the inside of a jail right. cell, especially for digital stuff. And if they do get found out, they get protected in custody. So in yep. in prison, they get protected on their own wings with their own guards and that. And then when they get out, they get a new identity and they get moved to new areas yep. um, with new names. And um, it's it's up to the locals to find them out. Like I, yep. I'm from a very, it's very true. rough part of the UK. And when, when one of them gets moved here, within within a matter of days, once it's found out, there is an army of us in the streets um, throwing bricks, kicking the doors in, everything. And that's what we have. That's, that's what it's down to because we can't trust the justice system to remove them anymore. It's up to us to literally show up on the street yeah. and, you know, basically attack these, just just to get them out. And well, then what happens is the, the riot bands come in. I am not advocating in. violence against anybody. I want to make it absolutely clear. I'm not advocating violence oh, I do. against anybody. What I'm advocating for is accountability. The nonsense, I, I do. These people don't have accountability for their actions. Judges don't have accountability for their actions, and that's why they're able to hide criminals. And criminals don't have any accountability for their actions, but innocent people then get put in jail. Our jails are used to traffic innocent people. Like, it's disgusting. But they get exposed again and again and again. And then, Correct. like, if, if you if, if the local community spoke up to the police, the police would tell them, oh, nah, they'd get moved again. And they just move them again Correct. and again and again. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so, it's, they, literally, it's um, it'll be the same in the U.S. if your justice system goes the way ours does. Because I, I thought the U.S. was much stricter. Because you guys give like forty year sentences like out like it's nothing. We we don't really do that over here. I have a I have a father. This isn't just a story about mothers being abused by the court systems. I have a father hey. who literally hey G writer who literally got put in in jail over Christmas because he drove Hello his daughter Hollywood. to get a change of clothes, and he got put in jail because two weeks later the mother said that that was upsetting to her that he waited in the car while the mother came in right. So he, they put him in jail for five days over Christmas. He was able to get out. And then they put an ankle bracelet on him. And he's on house arrest. He's never done anything criminal or wrong. And they've never given him a trial. So for five months, he's not been able to work. He's not been able to travel. He's not been able to do anything because of these false accusations. And he's not given a trial on. And he can't hold the judge accountable because the judge has judicial immunity. It's crazy. Jesse, thoughts? <laughs> I think that 
people should be held accountable for anything they did wrong, and let's get at them. A lot of people don't like that shit. Nothing's good with people that take advantage of people. Correct. You know, in that sense. And uh, but these people hide people under have... they hide under fake personas, right? Fake reputations. Like you know what? Jeffrey Epstein wasn't a child sex trafficker. Jeffrey Epstein was just taking model UN teenage model UN representatives all over the world. They have these well, false bullshit reputations, and we need to tear those down. Well, with technology today, it's like there's a lot of people out there trying to get people like that. For instance, a few years ago, I think Ashton Kutcher had an app he made that looks at the background of hotels for child sex trafficking that recognizes what hotel that is, like an AI, to find out where those people are. He saved a lot of people, but that doesn't get much media attention. Yeah, you know what I mean? interesting. The one or yeah. two or three people in the media in L.A., they want to put up there and be like, oh, we got one of them or two of them. But that shit happens all the time in Hollywood. We need to get at those people. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, we're we're waking up to it. We've been asleep to it for a long time. It was money's a big things. influence, and these people that are being like put up on the pedestal, like oh, we got one up. That shit happened twenty five years ago on most of those people. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, wherever they did. But I'm saying like let's get what's happening now and get those people because that shit's fucked up. And like we need to get those people. We need to stop this from happening to anyone yeah. else. We need to make their reputations more I, accurate. We need to make their reputations more accurate. I went to court with my ex-girlfriend about six years ago because she was an offender bender in K-Town. And when she hit the car, uh, there was a girl tied up in the trunk. And I went to court with her two, af two years after me? that while she had to testify in the case. Yeah. There's oh, God. A girl shit happens every day. LA is a big <laughs> city. A lot of shit goes down. And you know what? That we doesn't gotta, sound good. Stop what's happening now. Save people. Protect people. That's a good point. I don't know. I don't know if she wants to be talking to me. <laughs> I think you're a gaslighter, but what do you got to say, gaslighter? Uh, I'm, I'm the master of being gaslit, actually. Okay, um, well, maybe you're trying so, to spin a web. Spin it. Well, okay, so they say that like a lot of times the evil you see in others is stuff that you're like you're battling with in, in your own mind. It's not necessarily means that you yourself are no, it doesn't mean that it so doesn't I'm mean that you're guilty. It all Hold, because I was a victim all the sin. No, no, no. What I'm saying spinning all the same shit that my husband's been trying to say. Really? Well, so he I'm got the children. So I, it's because I was a victim. I'm courts almost always side happening. with the moms. Everyone knows that. No, that's actually not true. And that's really? statistically exactly, true. Yeah, yeah. it's not true at all. It's hundred percent true. The, that, that is actually. Oh, really? Where's your? Statistic? Is it just a fact? Oh, well, okay. So, what's the Saunders report? Have you read it? Do you know what it is? How many pages is it? Don't fucking come at me with shit unless you've done your research. The idea that fathers get screwed in. Sixty-eight to eighty-eight percent, according to the Huffington Post. Oh, really? Interesting. So that's where you fathers. Get well, Huffington you said don't come out you without evidence, so I just How got it. How did you get that? How did you get that? Was fast. There's this, the there's this crazy Huffington site Huffington called Huffington Google. True. Anyway, so eight to fourteen percent um, of battles go Alisa, to the father. I'm just gonna say this right now. I'm not interested in talking to this clown. He's right, you really don't like this guy. All right, you don't. You, you okay? And, all right. Honesty isn't afraid of questions. The truth isn't afraid of questions. So all the truth is not afraid of questions. Is he right? Is the truth? So that's that is interesting. That is interesting what he's saying that last part, right? So he said the tr so you you are so um unafraid to say yes. the truth. To say right. the truth. So someone like that, you probably get those questions all the time, the ones that he was asking. What what were well, the questions well, what's that you're saying is every yeah. question the gaslighting starts. I want you to understand. It starts with inserting doubt. You just try and get a little sliver of doubt in people's minds. Like, oh, isn't the court just really coming out against all the fathers? No. Hey, Let me tell hey. you something. That is a bullshit mentality. This isn't, again, I'm going to say it one more time. This isn't a mother issue. This is hey. a father hey. issue. This is a child trafficking issue. Our hey, Lizzie. are used to traffic children. Yes. Hey, Lizzie. You know, I, I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't agree with you more if you read, um, there's a book called Divergent I was reading that said the prison population in the United States in the last 10 years went from 1 million to 2 million. Yeah. So crime literally doubled in two years for no apparent right. reason. Yeah. And so um, kind of like a black hole could appear and eat up the planet Earth. Um, it's unexplainable. 
Um, but I'm really sorry to hear what you're going through right now. Um, I feel like the first step, um, they say the fear of God leads to wisdom. And maybe the problem is they just don't fear Lizzie enough in New York City. I right. know in, in I Los Angeles. I don't want to fear me. I just and want people to be accountable for their own actions and stand up for their own shit, which is what I said to my husband when this first happened. I well, accountability, like, accountability and standing up for their shit, first they have to feel in their heart and soul, don't fuck with this person. If, they're, if you fuck with this person, there's going to be serious repercussions down the line. Wow. Well, I, I feel like it's... Yeah, and if you think about it, if you think about it, just hear me out. If you think about a human being and a price on them, a lot of things are priceless, but some fuck-ups do have a price on them. And there are certain fuck-ups that a cop can do. Let's say you shoot a rabbi who's walking down the road. You're done. You're, you're fucking done. You know, and the, and the, real, the real issue is that the rabbi's price on his head might be a billion dollars, and the cop's price is $10 million. So... Hmm. In a lot of ways, it is sort of like real estate. You're in a bidding war for your plan on moving forward. And maybe it's expensive. Maybe it takes a lot of work to pay it off in the end. But what, what I'm wondering, it took a long time for people to fear Elisa the right way. At this point, when she walks along the road, they feel wisdom from her. They, they feel wise. This they has feel got nothing to do with me. Up. I don't want anybody to do, to do what fear But that's, that's the root I cause. Want people to just be responsible for their they, own they, shit. Take the cops, the cops in, in New York a year from now, mark my words, will fear Lizzie when she walks along the road. It'll make their operations smarter. It'll make it so the FBI can coordinate things better. The and FBI make, is in on it. The FBI is totally, they don't give a shit. The FBI is helping to perpetuate the crimes. The they, FBI, they have to be in on it because if they weren't, do you know how many times I've gone to them? I, agree. I gave the FBI... All okay. the evidence they for grand larceny, two hundred and forty thousand dollars missing from my account. Okay. And okay. I gave them the emails from okay. the CEO, Mark Davidson, COO of City Private Bank, who said these checks okay. were issued to to your husband on the state. And I was like, all right, we'll cancel them and right. issue them to. Okay. And they won't do it. So then, when I went to the FBI, the FBI right. said, "Do you really okay. think?" Do okay. you want us to believe that the COO of Citibank would coordinate with you? And I was like, okay. no, motherfuckers, okay. I don't want you to believe it. I want you to look and, at the and, evidence. And, and, I want you, you know, to do an investigation. You, you know, you know their like perspective it. as well, right? Which is an FBI agent, right? Maybe the price on their head is a lot higher than a cop. So if you want to take out an FBI agent, I read an right, article. Nobody wants to take right, out right. anybody. I don't well, know why you're going down this line of discussion. The reason, why, the, the reason why I'm going down that road is because in, in good design, you want to start with the extremes. So if you understand an extreme yeah, I've situation, I've got no time right? for this bullshit. i got to be honest with you. Nobody's talking about I, taking people out. We're just talking well, about being good humans, I'm, having I'm, accountability in our I'm, society. I agree with you. So, so the question is, how, how do we get the $240,000 back to you in the end, Lizzie? Well, the point is we hold our judges accountable so that yeah. if the judges hide crimes in their court, then the judges go to jail. And as soon as we start doing that, okay. then the judges won't let crimes be hidden in our court and that our courts they can won't. actually be used to get justice instead yeah. of commit crimes. That's yeah, how we I, do it. We and end again, judicial I'm, immunity. I, I know. We, we need to do that. We need to end judicial immunity. It should be the case that if a judge yeah. is caught red-handed, like – Elisa's old mentor would say their hand is on the furnace. You got to get your hand off the furnace, guys. Um, they're, a lot of times they're caught literally red-handed in the middle of what they call Trump on, high crimes and treason. So they're just in the middle of no, a war. No, they're not in the middle of it. They're helping to propagate it. They are. They, they are. are and the mechanism by which these crimes are propagated. Yeah. So what I want to say is I, I want to say sorry, first of all, Lizzie. Okay, uh, I want to say sorry, sorry. And then I want to say good job. Thank Good you. job holding your own. And I know that a year from now, for sure, for a fact, you're going to have your kids back. Yeah, you're going to have, true. I know for a fact, okay, the fear of God leads to wisdom. When you're, when they're, when, when it goes into a wisdom circuit, circuitry, and they finally feel in their heart and in their soul, when that person walks down the road, you do not cross this line or there are repercussions. They feel I don't want work. people to fear me. I want people to fear their own accountability. I okay, hold on, hold on, I hold on, everyone. I hold on. I, I just need like a little break because I have a call. I don't know if it's for Lizzie or not. Kermit and friends. Hi, this is Brain. Um, <clears throat> I'm calling in uh, because I've been listening to Lizzie and her story, and it um, resonates so deeply with me. And I find her to be 
probably the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Um, I would defend her honor every day against all authority. Um, she's amazing. Um, so I just wanted to say that, um, and that I'm be interested in meeting her someday and having lunch. All right, now we're talking. All right, and I would yes. Defend her honor every day. All right. It's all, all enemies. All enemies. I love that. Thank she you. is very interested. I'm I'll just going to answer on her behalf. She's yeah. Reach out to Lizzie. Thank you. Thank you for your call. Thank great, you. great caller. All right. So see, that was nice. See, you never know what's going to happen around here. Uh, speaking of that, hey, John Bolton. What's up, kid? How you doing? I'm okay. You know, we had an interesting show. I, I don't know if you guys are doing the wrap-up show, you and your daughter, Lori. Are you guys working on that together? Um, I think she's got something going on up there. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. All right. I know you have your show called uh, Man Cave Live, but you're helping with Kermit and Friends. Are you singing today? Is that um, happening? Well, I, I've sang this song before, but it always kind of goes pro appropriate when we have all these conflicts about life and things like that. <laughs> um, a little... A little Louis Armstrong, what a wonderful world. Perfect. That works perfectly. Thank you so Let's much. Let's see if I can do it right. I tried, you know, trying to get in. And shout out to the Man Cave fans out there. Brain, I heard you out there. See all the different people. So, and uh, Danny from LA and Gonzo for all your help this week. I see trees of green. Red and roses too, I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. The bright, blessed day, the dark, scary night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the face of people going by I see friends shaking hands saying how do you do oh they're really saying I love you I hear babies cry I watch them grow they'll learn much more than I'll ever know and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, yeah. Late Louis Armstrong, such a more himself. There's a lot of meaning in that song. We're all supposed to get along. We're all supposed to be friends. We're all under one God, one world. And we should all take, live life that way. So here's my fans out there at the Man Cave. Lisa, it's always an honor to be on here. I'm glad I was finally able to get in. Gonzo, Danny, A, is he? Mush. Toasty, Leah Bobia, Ava, Ava Baby, Miss Dolly out there. Everybody that's a part of my group, I got to give them all a shout out. Kermit and Friends. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Good. So, listen, um, what happened with Andy Dick exactly? Why, why did the two of you break up? So, that's a great question. Um, yeah, it just really, I was getting a lot of anxiety. Like I had so much anxiety and it's still, I'm having a big problem with it. Just him, 
I, it was just, it just went so badly. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm friends with all his friends. Uh, hey, uh, like HUD, Isaac, HUD? HUD? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So, you know, I told you it wasn't going to work out. Now I can say I told you so, Elisa. No, no, you were right. You were right. I tried my best. Um, you know, he's a great guy and, uh, well, not really a great guy, actually. I, I don't know. He's a guy. He's definitely a guy. Um, not a great guy. Yeah, yeah, no, he's not a great guy. Groping Uber drivers and shit. And, like, yeah, yeah, he's just too much trouble. He's a rapist, technically, okay? He's not a great guy. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, he's not a great guy. Uh, but I uh, think that he, I tried my best. You know, I can feel good about that. Oh, what's going on? Oh, no, wait, what's happening? Uh... Wait, hold on, hold on, Barry. Uh, HUD? Oh, hey. Hey, what's up? What's going on over there? Not much. What's going on? Is that your girlfriend? Yeah, she's here. Wow, okay, so this is HUD Isaacson. Uh, from the time he came on Kermit and Friends to right now, he got a girlfriend in that amount of time. So I'm not just saying to people that's the reason you should watch Kermit and Friends, but it is pretty good luck for a lot of people. It's bad luck for some people, but it's very good luck for like others. So HUD met a girlfriend. He has a girlfriend, a live-in girlfriend, and his life is going way better than when we first met him. Right, HUD? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So are you thrilled? Yeah. Yeah, you're, you are thrilled. Yeah, you seem like you're in a really good mood. What is on the agenda for you, you and your girlfriend today, your new girlfriend? Uh, I don't know. Uh, just after this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I was trying to go to the zoo. I haven't been to the zoo in a while. Oh, yeah? What about the wrap-up show? You're so great on that. Oh, yeah. I love to do it. I love, love to do it. Yeah, you could you could talk to Lori. You could talk to all the people from here. You can well, talk about uh, what's his name, uh, Flesh. You could talk about Lizzie. What are you doing? Are you, are you guys still in bed, huh? You guys are still uh, in bed. No. <laughs> yeah, you are. You are. It's like sexy time over there. I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Kermit and Friends is sexy. Um, okay, and then so okay, so yeah, on the wrap up show today, a couple of the good topics that I think uh, would be amazing is, um, you know, obviously Lizzie's situation with the, with the pedophilia, like she married this amazing guy that was, you know, handsome and he was successful, one of the top lawyers in New York. And he ended up being a pedophile, allegedly a pedophile. And, and she is so upset by that. It's ruined her life. Her finances have been taken away. She doesn't have a home. She's homeless. I mean, what a horrible situation to be in. And then Flesh, uh, he was just such a positive guy, a religious guy. He believes in God. He's so blessed. And my question about, you know, his, he's just so, he's more blessed than other people. Okay. That's what I found right. about him. So he, he actually was born into like a bad environment, but through his talent, his intelligence, his drive, his perseverance, he doesn't seem like a depressed guy. He doesn't seem like he has any emotional problems. He just went straight to the top. And I just wonder, you know, do you have to have all that, those qualities? Because those are qualities that not everybody has. I know, you know, I, I'm, I'm lacking in some of those qualities. But, you know, can you still be blessed? Can you still believe in God even if you don't have all his blessings? Because it's easy to have blessings when you're just an amazing, talented, you know. he. I mean, he pretty much uh, shot to the top right away. I mean, he was like a teenager. And then, you know, he got a Grammy. And he got, you know, a Soul Train Award. I mean, us, uh, HUD, you know, we're still, um, what are we still? I don't even know. By the way, um, Bone Thugs and Harmony was my is my favorite rap group. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're from Cleveland as well. So. Ah, all right. Well, I'm gonna hook you up with those guys. They're amazing. You know Jesse. He was the one that booked the guest. Uh, Doctor Roy, you are somewhere hey. very cool. Wow, look at you. Where are you right now? We're we're in Philly, uh, Alyssa. Oh, you're in, oh, you're in Philly. You're in a fun place in Philly. Okay, great. We're in well, Philly. I have something very special to present: an Eric Riggs original video. Um, I'd like to show it to you. So, Eric Riggs is a guy that I used to work with in an office, right? But I always knew that he was capable of a lot more. All right, a lot, right, Eric? Oh, me, myself, and I. I uh... I'm really not that capable of a whole lot of things. If I was real capable of things, I'd be able to snap my fingers and make a call of that banker over there. 
maybe like Lucas at our office, he could he could make a call for her, and they could hook it up together. Um, but I'm not, I'm not really. Uh, I get really embarrassed really easily. So, uh, um, and I actually have an important meeting I got to get to. I love you, Elisa, and uh, you folks have a great rest of your show. Okay, well, Eric, uh, have a great day. Here's Eric's video that he sent me this week. Really love it. Produced by Guy Apaya. Pray for peace by Eric. This call, they're all it's just a pornographic video. It's a confession that, you know, I want to call you and I want you to answer the phone, right? It's like, I want you to open up your legs to me tonight. It's the same thing as saying, Elisa, I want you to go on stage at Madison Square Garden and I want you to play this set. You know? But finding a way to, to kind of make it all make sense in the context of you know, hey, you know, in a long distance relationship, sweetheart, this is totally normal. one out on your end to this, you know, and realize how good this feels inside of you, in your pussy, between your lips, but then I think we have something here, and not only that, but I could say Elisa Swartz, you know, <laughs> you know, I enjoyed, you know, having dinner with you tonight, right so much that I want to reward you by letting you ride on top of my cock you know you know so now it's time to take off your panties okay and I would just want you to just be fulfilled you know I want you to to you know put the pedal to the metal and ride this car Hey, Lucas. Welcome to Carmen and Friends. Hello. How are you doing? Great. It's so nice to hear from you. I was so excited that you called. I um, haven't heard from you in a while. What's what's happening with you guys? Well, let's get it straight. You called me. And, um, yeah, so Andy and I, we had we had a good night. You know, I invited some girlfriend's house. You know, we had fun. But we get over back to Andy's house, and it's clean. it was clean. Like, uh... Callie actually did a very great job. Like, it was immaculate, clean. So we get back over there, and there's a fucking pentagram in his uh, living room. So I don't know who's going to explain that, but it kind of freaks me out. So um, I left. <laughs> Is Andy okay? Uh, emotionally, maybe. Mentally, definitely not. Um, should you privately call him? Yes. So that's about where it's at. I think he needs a little, you know, he talks. We could call it that. I think that too. I think that'd be great. Yeah, and at least you know, we, you know, we've been on the, we've been on different sides of the turf sometimes, but I think we on the same page. We both care about Andy. You know, we both love Andy, so I think we both should try our best to make sure he's on the right path. And, you know, he always says, oh, I'm fine. You know, he loves to say, oh, I could." I always tell him, like, you should slow your roll. You know, like, when he's drinking, like, oh, I could get much drunker. Like, that's his little catchphrase. But the thing is, I, you know, when it, when it comes to addiction and stuff, sometimes you got to let them hit their rock bottom. You can't really stop them. You can try out, you can do every, every technique in the book, but sometimes you got to let them just, just fuck yourself up and you cannot support it. Do you understand that at least? What do you mean by support it? Monetarily. Just oh yeah, it. no, I'm done. Monetarily, I'm done, Lucas. I'm done okay. supporting him. I am. Yeah, and you know, we got off on, you know, I 
very suspect of you. We, we had our, you know, disagreements, but I think we both agree on that. That's a, you know, best decision is seeing uh, a sober Andy. I want you to see it because you haven't seen that. And I want you to see the tiger, the fucking lion, the dragon that is unleashed when that guy actually fucking gets off his, you know, his little kick here. Because he, you know, he has, he, has, he has people texting him and stuff, you know, it's like, when are you getting sober? Like, you know, big, big players. I know. And it's just a matter of when. Yeah. No, you're, you're right. You're right, Lucas. I don't have any bad feelings about you. I just didn't like the situation. You know, it was just a very bad situation for me. And it got worse and worse. And I just, I, I, I need to work on myself right now. I can't be involved in this. I just can't. Vice versa. I, I completely agree. And, you know, I, I apologize. I, you know, I've made my own mistakes. I'm not a perfect human being. I definitely, you know, I had a little birthday month. And, you know, I I made some mistakes with you. Definitely. I was very rude to you, Elise. And I apologize for that. Because you're, you're, you're a very sweet girl. And you're very professional. And you have a great fucking, you got, you got, you got a great thing going for you. And I'm proud. For, I'm proud of you, and I support you 100 percent because I see that you're actually trying your best, and that's that's all that that's all that matters. Thank you, thank you so much, Lucas. I really appreciate that. No, thank you. All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay. All right, bye. Huh. Did you hear me? What was the question? Oh, you really? You didn't hear it? What is going on with you and Lucas? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Andy. You're cute as pie and you are sweet as candy. He is my Andy, my Andy, my Andy. 
Lori. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that one up. <laughs> so Lori, our wrap-up show host, main host, who has a lot to talk about on her separate channel. So this is what we do here. So we have a show where we interview people. And then there's several shows that talk about this show and they relate to the topics on it. So did you write notes today, Lori? No, I'm trying to be more relaxed with it. Not take it too uh... seriously because when I take it too seriously, then I don't have fun. Yeah, it stresses you out. I know it stress you out. And that's like the last thing I want Kermit and friends to do to anyone. I don't want anyone to be stressed out. And I think something that's going to make you feel a lot better is a painting that was made for you from Sugar. Let me find it. Here it is. Painting of Lori. Look at that. How beautiful. Right? Oops. Look at that. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? So see sugar if you want if you want a copy of that. It's a gorgeous painting. So that's going to make everybody feel better, right? So I don't want you to be stressed by being the wrap up show host at all, but I want people to like do shows off this show cuz it's so fun, right? I mean it, it's right. kind of it's kind of fun. I mean you weren't having fun, but that's that's just uh, you know, you, right? Like other people would have fun doing it. <laughs> I I do. I I'm like all over the place a lot of the times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, trust me. I am not well. I went to the hospital this week. I had so much anxiety. So that just shows how well I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so obviously I'm not doing well at all, but, um, so pretty much today after. Sorry. That? That's that my noise? ringtone. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, what is that noise? Okay. So Dr. Roy is everywhere. Dr. Roy, I read your children's book and it was like about going to Miami. <laughs> I think Roy is more of a party animal than we ever expected. Um, but he, yeah, it, I was reading like his children's book to my nephew and there was like a part like, let's look at the beautiful people in Miami. And I'm thinking, <laughs> what's going on over there? <laughs> hey, Alyssa. Um, yeah. it's, it's been a very powerful show. Very powerful. Yes. Um, Thank you. I have so much um, to tell about, like for instance, Lizzie's story. Lori, you look you look great this week. You look happy. You look like you recovered from something. I'm doing a little bit better. All right. Yeah. You're doing yeah. better. But, you know, there's just so many things. Like, for instance, Lizzie's story, there's so much to tell about. You know, um, a woman that was sexually abused, right, um, which is her story, and then marries a man that's, that's narcissistic and really kind of, like, backstabs her and puts yeah. it and hits it against her. Yep. And and so she's, you know, she's, you know, now in trauma and then trying to deal with this issue of, you know, losing our kids, going to jail, you know, all this drama. All it's just a never ending cycle of bad things happen to her. And so, you know, someone like trying to recover is just phenomenal if you can get out of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, she seems very, like, on edge to today. Like, she seemed very on edge, and she's still mad. Like, she's writing in all these private chats right. about, um, like, right now she's really upset. I mean, she's mad at Onision, obviously. He's the number one. But then number two, after Onision, he's very upset. Uh, she's very upset with this guy, Eric, who's really, <laughs> been, he's, like, Eric, she, she's really <laughs> mad at Eric. So poor Eric. He's, he's pretty innocent, Eric. He's just a regular guy, this guy, Eric. And he, I don't think he was actually trolling her. That's actually his personality. I know that's shocking to everyone. But, um, oh, 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 Lizzie. Okay, so she's calling me right now. Okay, so let's see what she has to say. All right, uh, hold on what? one second. Lizzie's calling me. She's still watching. Lizzie, um, she's upset that I say, that I said that she was on edge. Okay, so see, now she's mad at me. So she's yep. mad at Onision. She's everyone. mad at Eric. And here she is. Okay, uh, uh, Lizzie, I didn't mean anything bad by that. I just thought that you might be um, upset. Alisa, first of all, stop lying. You're not, I wasn't upset with the guy. I'm upset that you put on a video, a hypersexual video, which is disgusting content and it's cheap, low hanging fruit. It should be beneath somebody who's intelligent like you are, but that's what you turn to, to try and get viewers. So instead of raising the bar to be more intelligent and have people come together over high ideas you have people to come together over disgusting things that create this divide in people and and 
it's gross. Like you specifically said, your producer said you wouldn't have any of this disgusting sexual content on, given the, the nature of my conversations. And then you went on and put it on a guy. I mean, what, what's wrong with you? Have you no morals? This is really disgusting. Well, I mean, I, it's a comedy show. I try to make it funny. And so it's a mixture of things. I like to have serious topics that people talk about. And then, you know, Eric has his jerk off video once a week. Okay, that's fine. Next time, just be honest with people and upfront. Don't use people. You told me you wouldn't have anything like that on, and then you did. Oh, I didn't even remember talking to you about that. I didn't know no, you didn't like Eric jerking off. And, and I specifically said in text that I didn't want any of that content. And that's why I haven't been on your show since the first time, because I saw that that's what your show was about. And it's beneath the, the type of stuff that I'm trying to talk about. No, but it's not all about that. There's different things. There's different, like, colors. Matter. Elisa, it's, it's disgusting. You did something that could fucking hurt my children and hurt me, and, and, and it's unforgivable. I, I, I would never do this to you. I would never put you in a situation like this. This is a type of lowbrow thing that is why you stay on a B list instead of going to the A list with your show. So you continue to discredit people or to try and paint me in a bad way or to put on hypersexual content when I'm talking about my children being kidnapped by a pedophile. You can go and do that. But don't expect people like me who have integrity to want to be associated with it. Okay. Okay. Bye. Lori, do you have a song for us? Um, yeah. Um, I have uh, queued up A Million Reasons by Lady Gaga. And Perfect. I, I want to dedicate it to the trolls and the haters. Uh, I want to dedicate it um, to my, my lovely friend Musa. Um, I've been debating back and forth on whether or not I want to dedicate it to Eric, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to dedicate it to Eric because he's he's one of the reasons I would want to quit the show at this moment <laughs> as a joke. Um, I want to dedicate it to Onision, who I love very much. He's been like, I, I've looked up to him like the last 10 years. His story's always been straight, always been honest, so... <laughs> To let you go, you're giving me a million reasons to quit the show. You're giving me a million reasons, five million reasons, giving me a million reasons, five million reasons. If I had a highway, I would run for the hills. If you could find a dry way, I'd forever be still. But you're giving me a million reasons, giving me a million reasons, giving me a million reasons, five million reasons. I keep on Try to make the world seem better, Lord, show me the way to cut through all this worn out weather. I've got a hundred million reasons to walk away, but baby, I just need one good one to stay.
I don't know what happened with that, but I just want to say thank you everyone that has been involved today. I had so much fun. I was very depressed this morning and everybody here just made my day great. Even Lizzie, she's still texting me, very upset. But even so, I'm so happy that she got to share her story today. If you want to reach out to Lizzie on Instagram, she's Elizabeth uh, Harding on Instagram. And if you want to reach out to Flesh and Bone, he is on Twitter, Onision. You all know how to find him. And I just appreciate this family. I appreciate this family here so much. Uh, hold on one second, Kermit and friends. Hey, Liz, it's Gonzo. Um, I just wanted to uh, promote uh, Johnny B's Man Cave Life. He's going to do um, uh, Kermit and Friends uh, wrap up Sundays. Wow. Okay. That is great. I love that. I love that. Thanks, Gonzo. Perfect. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm really sorry with what happened with Lizzie. She's still texting me and I'm sorry about that. But what can I do? I wanted to leave Onisi on with her longer. I really did because that was interesting. But you know what? It's a very fine line between like what's interesting to me and what is going to like make someone hate me for the rest of their lives. Right. Right, Charmin. Right. Right. It really is. Really is. And, and I feel like this is my opportunity since there was so much negative talk about masks earlier in the show for me to give, an, you know, to, to piss people off, too, um, because I like the masks. Mm -hmm. I I'm going to miss the mask. No man has told me to smile in over a year. Yeah, that is refreshing. I can have a conversation with me, myself, and I, and nobody knows but us. We discussed it. We had a whole team meeting about it, took a vote, and decided the mask stay. Majority rules. I like them. Plus, the variant is really scary. I have um, heard stories of friends, people I know who have gotten the variant, even though they're fully vaccinated and died very quickly. Whatever this is, I don't trust it. The mm -hmm. idea that we're just going to tell people to take your masks off and go have fun. Um, for all the people who don't trust our government, this seems like a death sentence to me. Um, it seems like they're just throwing people out into the wind. And if you, you get sick, you get sick. If you don't get sick, you don't get sick. Who cares? Good luck. Um, I, I live in Florida, right? I feel like that's really important because Florida has kind of had a reputation throughout all of this as being a, uh, a free for all. You can go do whatever you want in Florida. It's not really even part of the United States anymore. And I went to Target and Walmart yesterday because I had to. And I was a little nervous because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to see. And it was the emptiest I've ever seen the stores throughout all of this. It is almost like the people don't trust each other enough to mask up if they haven't been vaccinated. Like we're in a situation right now where everybody's really angry with each other and they don't trust each other and they're ready to pick a fight for anything. And a mask is like a blinking neon sign to come start trouble with me. And I, I don't want it to be that way. I really like the masks, um, not just for um, the fact that it protects us against illness or that the flu has been lower this year than any other reasons, not just because no man has asked me to smile and I can get away with my RBF anytime I want. There's also the legitimate issue that this virus impacts testosterone production. And we all know what that does. Like that is a very serious thing for all of our health, but especially men's health. And I ask all the men I know to mask up like they're protecting our favorite toy, right? Mm -hmm. It's the one thing that keeps everybody moving. It's what keeps Eric sending videos every week. Like this virus is a real serious issue. It, it impacts fertility. It impacts so many other things. The, the Brady sin response is different. The immune response is different with this virus and all the other viruses. It causes a lot of long-term issues, whatever it is. I don't want it. I want it to stay as far away from me as humanly possible. I want to be healthy. I want my kids to be healthy. I'm vaccinated. My kids are vaccinated. I, I want to be able to trust, but verify, but I don't actually want to ask anybody if they bothered to get the vaccine. This is a scary time and people are already mad and angry and ready to lose it for anything. And I would like to do whatever we can to make each other happy and comfortable and laugh through it whenever possible. I try to make it funny, right? Like I didn't, 
I didn't just want the vaccine. I wanted the Moderna vaccine because it was Dolly Parton's vaccine. And I was hoping to get a little Dolly out of the vaccine. I want to find a way to get people to protect each other. We wear seatbelts every day because the government tells us to for our safety. I, I think I think masks are... Your call has been forwarded to an audience. I think masks are a good thing. And I think that they're not designed to create a godless society or uh, or turn us against each other. I think it is just a simple little piece of cloth that cuts down the big dirty particles from getting in your mouth and your nose. That's it, right? If we could all be nicer to each other, find a way to lift each other up and reinforce each other and keep each other safe. No one knows what the other person is struggling with. Maybe all your underlying health issues are mental health issues and you'll be perfectly fine throughout this virus. But maybe your underlying health issues are, are something to do with your lungs or your kidneys or something important that you need. I, I have a, a an amazing young lady in my life. She's 15 years old. Her, her dad got sick. He passed away. Everybody in the family got COVID and she recovered, but she tripped and fell last week and scraped up her knee. And now her knee is infected and it's not healing normal. And it is Look, whatever this virus is, it's not like anything we've ever seen before. Whether you believe it was lab created or it was a bat mutation, whatever you want to believe, I'm okay with that. I would like us all to come together for a cause greater to our, greater than ourselves and, and destroy a common enemy. And I would like the common enemy to be the virus. I would like to starve it so that it can die, right? We can, we can cut it with a sword. We can shoot whatever it takes to kill this thing. I despise it. Um, we, we need to figure out how to keep each other safe in, in the littlest way possible. If we could just stop spitting on each other, right? If we could wash ourselves, if we could just be, be, be careful, more than just be careful, you know, take your vitamins, um, use yeah. all of the antiviral herbs Sherman, in Sherman. your home cooking. Sherman. It's, it's there. Sherman, I don't mean to introduce, interrupt you, but hey, Eric, um, how are I'm just you? trying to catch in the tail end of your policy platform over there. You know, I, I believe that you would make platform. such a good first female president of the United States of America. Right, everybody like, has a dream, and you should you alter your dreams, no matter you know, how crazy it is. Oh. And I know that if it is caused by these people, then the end of the virus then would be the end of their rhetoric. So the virus really is our enemy, but it sounds like your viewpoint is a little bit different than Mr. Bone of Bone Thugs Harmony. Um, and I was wondering how you could explain that because Mr. Bone had, had, he had such great points. I think it's flesh and bone, but uh, Eric, so right now I have to end the show because I'm just getting all these texts Okay. and uh, you know, this is complete fucking bullshit that you're ruining me. What the fuck is wrong with you? I yeah, see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is wrong oh, with me? I, what you did is unconscionable. Oh, I God. trusted you and you used me. Of, yeah, it's really bad. That throws me back to, to community college and business you dis law. You disgust me. Uh, you know, all these mean, mean, mean texts that I'm getting. Yeah, you know and what? If, and, and if you build a house with a, with a glass roof and you have tigers down there and I fall into those tigers, that's your fault, too. It's not my fault. You're yeah, but the thing is, Eric... Um, you know, you can't win everybody over, right? Can't win. Can't. Oh, uh, what's the saying? You can't win everybody all the time, but you win some of them some of the time. Yeah. You, it's pretty soon it's going to be summertime. You cannot win everybody over. You just can't. So what I say is if you, you know, enjoy this, I'm happy. If you don't enjoy it, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. But it's all where people are coming from, where they're coming from, right? So it's like. Where we're coming from, that's how, like, we're projecting. So I wasn't, try I didn't even think of that story when I was playing Eric's video. I just love Eric's videos. So, you know, I'm a big fan of Eric, and he just keeps giving me content every week, week after week after week. And I did not think that Lizzie would be offended by that because it had nothing to do with her story. It was a separate segment. So it's very hard to think, oh, well, this person like this, well, this person like that. It's, like, impossible. But, uh, Sugar, are you joining the wrap-up show today? Yes, I am. <laughs> Missy is in a lot of pain, and she's going to see things the way she sees them. And I'm hoping that the right person sees this and gets her, you know, help that will actually help her feel better. 
Yeah. Is that we didn't do this to hurt people. We didn't do this no. to hurt people or drag people. And I really, really want to see Lizzie in a place where her, where life is something besides a torment for her. You know, and Charmin seems happier today, which was nice. Yeah, no, she Charmin seems great. You know, I, I just I haven't been happy recently. I've been so anxious, but this show has really made me happy. How did she end up in the hospital for being anxious? Don't you do like hiking and meditation and stuff? What happened? So that didn't work for me. I was uh, I did a lot of uh, like I walk like seven miles a day, but sometimes I just really feel like. Uh, uh, something like, like my chest kind of, uh, constricts. Yeah. Like constricts. And like when I breathe, I feel like there's something wrong. And, uh, so I went to the hospital and they gave me a lot of tests. They did like an EKG and a lot of blood tests and they said there was nothing. So I just think maybe my anxiety got a lot worse. What did they recommend for treatment? Not really nothing. They just said, <sighs> cause they were trying to keep me there for like so long they kept me there for like eight hours and I wanted to leave. And I said, am I dying or not? And they said, I'm not. Kermit and friends. Kermit and friends. Hello? Hello? Yes, Kermit and friends. How can I help you? Hey. Is this still Kermit and friends? Yes, this is still Kermit and friends. Yeah. I talked to my friend, not Kermit. What's going on? I'm pretty sad. You know, I'm upset. You're upset? Why are you upset? Just, just in situations that I struggle with. And I, I feel like you are the reason. I'm the reason you're upset? I thought Andy was your fiance. Is he? Or is he not? I don't even know if he's alive right now. Is he? As far as I know, yeah. All right, good. Well, you know, it's just not a good feeling having a fiance where you don't know if they're alive. Like, that's the worst. So I just don't like it. That's your fault. That's not my fault. I have nothing to do with that, Lucas. I can't live with him. He's horrible to live with. He's in a bad mood. He's ungrateful. He's not nice. He's he's he, he's well, making me. Sometimes you've got to go through you know, the rain to see the rainbow, you know? No. No, I'm done. I'm sorry, Lucas. I'm done. You can have I'm him. Done. Yeah, you can have him. He's for you. I don't want him. You don't want him? All right. Well, he'll have to meet someone else because I, I, can't, I just can't do it, Lucas. It's why just. Would you, why would you? Why would you put God to him like that? You, you made him feel so in love with you, and then the second he tries to actually take things seriously, you just sweep the rug out from him. He didn't try to take things seriously ever. Okay, he spent one day with you. Can you can you tell that story? How that, that it went, went bad. Every day has been bad. Every day. Okay. You know, I don't mean to get melodramatic on you, but Jesus Christ, everyone's so full of shit nowadays, and you know that. Like, and you are too. No, I'm not. I'm being honest. I don't like him anymore. I'm not. I don't. I don't like him. What? You don't like him? Not anymore. He's unlikable. He sucks. He sucks as a boyfriend. He sucks as a fiance. He sucks. He's not He's not a good one. I'm sorry. He, I hate to say it. He sucks. He does. As a fiance, he sucks. He's not good. Okay. Well, that, well, you know, he has two baby mamas, so I, I think they would agree with you on that. Yeah. But the thing is, he's a good guy. You know, he has, you know, good touch, but he's, you know, just, you know, got his two screws loose, you know. Couple wires crossed. Well, I know you're trying to pawn him off on me, and I'm not taking him because I'm just done. Okay, Lucas. What'd you say? I, I know you're trying to pawn him off on me right now, but I'm done. I'm done. I, I tried. It's not happening. I'm not trying to pawn anything off of you because he's he's worth a million, and I'm not taking it down. All right, whatever, Lucas. But, uh, right. I'll let you continue your broadcast. Give me a call later. All right. All right. All right. Oh God, I'm just done with that. Anyway, um, any, anyway, try to erase that from my memory. Everybody that contributed to Kermit and Friends today, I just truly appreciate it. Uh, flesh and Bone, I appreciate you. What a doll that guy was. What a doll. Uh, Onision, even Lizzie, I know you hate me. 
I know you hate me. It's okay. It's okay. I hope you come back and I hope that you forgive us here on Kermit and Friends. And Eric means no harm by his little masturbation videos. They're very funny if you just let them, you know, if you just look at it like they're funny, you'll be fine. Uh, Lori, do you want to try your song one more time, sweetheart? Um, I can. <laughs> okay. okay, why don't you try it? I disconnected my phone from the Wi-Fi. Maybe it's that because Cheryl's home and she's on the internet too. <laughs> Um, Go ahead, Lori. You're giving me a million reasons to let you go. You're giving me a million reasons to quit the show. You're giving me a million reasons. Give me a million reasons. Giving me a million reasons. About a million reasons. If I had a highway, I would run through the hills. If you could find a dry way, I'd forever be still. But you're giving me a million reasons. Give me a million reasons. Giving me a million reasons. About a Sky. What, Greg? I'm a banana. You're a what? I'm a banana. What happened to your clothes? I'm a banana. I'm a banana.